And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only Red <laughs> Red Ranger of the Ge of the Geek Watch, better known as Mildra. And with me, I have for I have so I have the rest of I have the rest of my merry brand here. We have the Blue Ranger of the Geek Watch, Good Brother Shades, the Yellow Ranger of the Geek Watch, Good Brother JT. The Black Ranger of the Geek Watch, Morphin Time. Good, good Brother Xanatrix. And the white. Pink Ranger of the of the Geek Range of the Geek Watch. <laughs> Freudian slip there. Um, good Brother Cure. You might be asking why I'm doing a bunch of Power Rangers jokes for this. Well, let me tell you a tale. Oh boy! Jump in, everybody! <laughs> I... Tell me a story, senpai. <laughs> Bless you. Good. Is in tight. <laughs> somebody, talk, is somebody talking about her? <laughs> Apparently. Somebody talking about you, dude? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, can, uh, regale us, Milk. What is this tale? Yeah. So, here, so, what's go? So, um, earlier, earlier this month, um, good brother Pox Toxic, who's a, in, who's an infrequent member of the server had ranted had ranted a bit about how about how bad he th about how bad he thought the um, Power Rangers TRPG was, and I'm, I've mentioned in the past that I was curiously optimistic about it when I when I learned that it was going to not use Five E as I initially feared when it was announced, along with a Transformers and GI Joe um, tabletop project but that it was going to be using a new system called Essence 20, and it was going to be handled by Renegade Game Studios. Now, for those unaware, Renegade Game Studios it, it handles the very good board game um, Heroes of the Grid, which was, which was done by a few um, former Fantasy Flight Games uh, staffers. They are also responsible, they are also responsible for um, the RPG Overlight, Kids on Bikes, and are and are the prince are the principal people responsible for future World of Darkness projects after all the shit that happened with uh, with Onyx Path and um and especially all the shit that happened with the Bloodlines Two video game that is probably never coming out mostly mostly because everybody who worked on the thing is is has pretty much has pretty much left Paradox and Paradox is more interested in w working on their own IPs but I digress. I had figured that I would do that I would skim through the thing, do a few bullet point notes and then do and then do a unimpressions video later. That was the plan. It's but as you know, plans change. There are only four rules you need to remember. Make the plan, execute the plan, expect the plan to go off the rails, throw away the plan. In the span of about in the span of less than twelve hours, and that might be a bit generous, I ended up writing out a full script. Because I was that pissed off about what I had seen. Now <laughs> some of what I'm some of what I'm going to be cover I'm covering will be um will be co will be compiled into a shorter video that is currently being um edited by Animane. I should ha I should have I should have that probably tonight or tomorrow. And once that and once that is once that is done, you'll I think you'll all have a clear picture on why I got so angry. And that's saying something because I don't get angry that easily. I might get I might get annoyed. I might gr I might groan. I might cringe. But outright anger, especially anger regarding tabletop, that doesn't happen often. I may be the bane of his fucking existence, but even I don't make this man that angry. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've known him longer I've known him longer than anybody, and this guy is cool. So if so if you if you manage to pit you know how it is if you try and piss off the quiet guy. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't exactly describe you as the quiet guy. I was but gonna yes. say <laughs> The point is, I'm, I'm the la I'm the last person in the room to yet to yell and scream because the, I got other people to do that for me. He ain't, he ain't he ain't he ain't quiet, but he ain't loud. 
Yeah. <laughs> they do call My me job. the evangelist for a reason. Yeah. You... <laughs> but as a but the thing is, after I, I after I finished with the script, I realized there is there is that um as much as I hate to admit it, this thing checks all of our boxes. So this will be the first. This will be the first. We've done reconstructions in the past, but usually they are on anim They are on anime, live action projects, or something on television. This will be our first tabletop reconstruction. And no, the no the reconstructing D and D classes thing doesn't count because I don't think we had nailed down what the reconstructing format was going to be at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So this will be a first because this because we are. Reconstructing Power Rangers the role playing game. Now I need now um before bef I need to I need to level with some of the bullet points of problems that I had before we really get into this. Um first first off, some very bizarre choices with the Essence 20 system including one of the most bass backwards cases of reinventing the wheel regarding how criticals work, which I'll get I'll get into when we get to that. The f the fact that the game has a massive, massive hard on for the Zordon era in general and the MMPR era in particular. Um, it this is a problem that actually spans the entire like medium of Power Rangers because they they oh it's their attempt to ca cater to the casual Power Rangers fans, the ones that were there for MMPR but have since kind of fallen off the map. But when you're making a game like this. You got to know that the people you're going to end up courting are the people who are probably still watching to this day. I'm kind of reminded of how, of when Dave Meltzer said that WWE does not have a casual audience. Which was a bit hyperbolic, but I do think he had a point. And to be fair, at least with the Boom Comics, while it certainly started with that, as the um, Power Rangers Boom Comics as they are now are going in their complete own direction it's a case of yeah they catered to the mmpr crowd at the beginning because that's how you make the money but then they found they found they were able to hook them enough that they could expand beyond that and thus still produce good still make money on other series you know or at least other rangers could get involved and it wouldn't be completely thrown off mm -hmm. i do th i do think it came to a head with the shattered grid event Oh, that was the per they they nailed the perfect timing for that. Just enough for make people interested, and they built that shit up. Mm -hmm. The shattered the shattered grid was a perfect storm, especially since, um, like him or hate him, they got JDF involved for the marketing. Oh, that that absolutely put it over the top. Like as much as I rag on JDF as being like just the the, the ultimate like big guy of like the Hulk Hogan of Power Rangers. Yes, I will make that fucking comparison though. Mm -hmm. I it's will a good comparison. Close. Hulk Hogan or John Cena? Oh no! You know John Cena works better. John Cena works better. I let me <laughs> let's correct. I'm going with I'm I'm going with I'm going with um Hogan instead of Cena because um outside 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 of things, Cena Cena is a Cena is not as much of an asshole. Fair. No, he just steps, he just puts his foot in the shit every time he talks about China. That's it. Eh, well, let's not go there. <laughs> what do you mean, not go there? Taiwan's a real country. Fuck not going there. <laughs> look, look, look. We've are, that's not we've the point are, I'm getting at. Yeah, right. uh, right, but that's not the uh, point. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, we've, um, okay, 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 okay. We've already made our jokes about West Taiwan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, now, <laughs> JDF, from what I've heard, and, this, and I want to make this very clear, just in case I am completely wrong, but I've heard plenty of stories from reliable sources that while JDF is very good with his fans, he is very friendly with them for the most part, when it comes to behind the scenes, uh, yeah, he's got a bit of an ego to him. Everybody, every, I'm pretty sure all of us saw the... The time he tried to he tried to get up in Van Damme's face. This is um this is my surprised Pikachu face. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, just the time that him and uh, him and for his former buddy uh, Austin St. John got into it on online. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, he now granted, even though he's a bit of a diva, he's not full Antonio Brown because we have another person in the Ranger community who definitely fits that bill. <laughs> Is it Blake? Yep. 
Oh, yeah. It could, how could it Blake's be anybody else? Blake's fucking Foster. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that guy, that, guy is, that guy is not just a diva. He's fucking Mil Mascaras. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. As far as I'm concerned, Blake Foster's in the clown car. <laughs> yeah, I think we put him in the clown car a few years ago. Yeah. But there was there was that... There, there was that whole, there's that whole issue, and I know some people will say, "Well, what if, what if they do, what if they do, what if they do expansions based on, based on specific seasons?" No, that's a bandage, and it's and also it, the wrong way to do it. One, it's the wrong, it's the wrong, it's the wrong way to do it. The only reason that the, the only time that you could ever get away with that kind of thing, are the doctor focused supplements for the Doctor Who RPG, and that can get away with it because even within one single Doctor's tenure there's a shitload of stories to cover and a shitload also of here's to cover here here's the other thing i've actually you know as believe it or not i actually did take a peek at this at this at this book mm-hmm. uh the way the system is designed while they a lot of the examples are based on M, uh, a lot they have a lot of examples based on mmpr it's designed so that you can't really you don't really need expansions to cover the other seasons it's pretty much set up that you could build any team you want that was the the art the selling point that this game that this game put forward is that this book is all you need for Power Rangers RPGs and to that to that end I want to bring up some I want to bring up something else um, I'm not sure if anyone else has uh, I'm not sure if anyone else here at here at the table um, besides besides of course Zan has seen the Valley of the Judged episodes that he and I have done regarding Avatar Legends, the Avatar TRPG by Magpie that we roasted over an open flame. And one of the problems that I had with it, and I ha- and to a certain extent I had with Hyperforce, when that when that was a thing, was a question that I had a question that I had to ask. Are you trying to rep- are you trying to replicate the t- are you tr- focused on having having adventures that replicate the TV show or Adventures within the world that that TV show takes place in. This is a this is what can also be called the met the um, meta narrative problem. Yeah, essentially, because this game is is so focused on the Zordon era and the and the MMPR arc of that era specifically, it's not giving you the proper scope or understanding of a full Power Rangers sandbox. It's it's trying to pigeonhole you, and it yeah. doesn't even realize it half the time. And the f- the reason why I'm so harsh on this kind of thing is because this is a problem that most TRPG designers figured out back about 40 years ago. Um, TSR back back in the early 80s had put out a had put out a Indiana Jones RPG that did not have any character creation and had the assumption that you were just going to play through the um, mo- the movies with the characters from the movies. It got roasted over an open flame in the reviews at the time. Yeah, and I think that w- I think that was in '82. I'd have I'd have to double check, and I don't feel like it right n- right now. And I'm not I'm not pulling a flutter for it. It's not it's not mm-hmm. worth it. The point is, if if people were able to, f- the o- the other one was the first run of. The venerated um, Mar- TSR Marvel superheroes game, also known as Marvel Phase Rip, because the origin the original book didn't have any character creation. It operated under the assumption, once again, that you were going to be playing as the as the characters from Marvel Comics. They quickly learned their lesson and put out expansions solely around character creation and expanding upon that. Because let's because let's be honest. When you when you brought me on to do writer, I don't think you I th- I think you would have thrown me out if I if I tried to replicate the story of any of any of the writers common writer seasons of the time. It would have made no sense. Like we we brought you in explicitly because we knew you could create your own world with that, and you know what? Took you a lot of house rolling, but god damn it, you pulled it off. <laughs> and. If, in my not so humble opinion, most people who would want to play a Power Rangers RPG will want, and I think we, I think we even talked about this. They don't want to play as the established characters, or sometimes even the established characters as NPCs. 
They want to set up their own sandbox to play in. Yeah. Most take... Our... Role-playing as a whole is about taking the rules and making it your own. This is something Gygax and and Arneson opined upon back in the 70s. And if... You know... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, the, reason, the reason why I'm bringing up all, all, of these, all of these bits of history is these things have been ingrained for decades. So in the year of our Lord, Cyberpunk 2022, there is no excuse to fall into these traps that people have managed to avoid for so long. Did we did did we just make a current year argument? <laughs> if, as much as I hate to admit it, this does this does apply. It's when people It's the end like, times. It's the fucking <laughs> end times. <laughs> the end is die, the end is die. Oh fucking run away, the end is die, die, die. <laughs> the end is die. <laughs> But I do see where Monk's coming from. Now, you know, you could have, like, a pre-made campaign, like what other TRPGs do, where you have preset characters that you can have them based on official seasons and stuff like that. Nobody was going to complain about that. But if you're going to create a book like this where you can create your own team, and that's the entire fucking point, there is no reason to have certain presets when it comes to certain aspects of character creation that dictate what kind of character you can make on it. Which is what this book does. And, uh, oh boy, I have words. <laughs> and it's bad when I, the non-TRPG guy, have something to say about this. Yeah, because there, I think that I, when I was going through the thing, I ended up giving, I ended up giving you guys some, the you guys and some of the other producers on RVT a few a few pointed questions because there were some things that I, I was thinking wait am, am I am am I just looking at this wrong am I blinded by my own experience so I figured okay let me let me ask people who who for whom this is their job about whether or not this is a good or bad idea <laughs> the uh, reaction spoke for themselves very quickly <laughs> so yeah you mind if I uh, field what we're gonna get to here? Because I think I know where we're gonna be heading in this particular topic. Yeah, let me let me um let me do the let me do the let me do let me let me pr let me broach it the same way I broached it to you when I was going through this. Ranger colors as classes, good or good or bad idea, and why? And I said right off the bat, I questioned it because it depends on how it was handled. But as soon as you explained what they did, I was like, no, this was a bad idea. So allow me to explain why this got my attention, mm -hmm. again, as the non-TRPG guy ah. in the group. Ah. <laughs> so in, chap in uh, chapter four of the core book, we have the role section, more specifically titled The Power Ranger Spectrum. In this section, it lists off the different colors you can pick from. Mm -hmm. One, it only allows you to pick from the base six colors plus a later part later on where you can pick white. But you can pick black, blue, green, pink, red, and yellow. Mm -hmm. The obvious choices. The problem that we have lies in how those colors are used. Because they're not just pick your color and go from there. It's... The color you pick determines certain stats you're allowed to get. For example, the red has slow slow capac uh, slow growth capacity and gets two strength and a social. Compared to blue, who's fast growth with two smarts and one speed. So base base and when you make it that you're thinking, wait a minute, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Blue being the smart guy? That's fucking Billy. They want you to be fucking Billy. That's what this is. These colors are specifically based on the original MMPR team. Mm -hmm. And that right there was a massive red flag to me. And I actually was just looking at this. This carries over into another aspect when it comes to the Zords. Oh, yes. <laughs> because the Zords are also spectrum based such as black has a hardened chassis blues enhanced attack red is increased ability 
and you get a small selection of sword types based on... Now, this is the one time where it doesn't go full MPR, but very fucking close. Because you have the Dinozords, you have the Battleborgs, and then you also have stuff like the Zeozords, the Turbozords, and the Mega Vehicle Zords from, you know, uh, in space. But that's it. That's all they give you. I mean, they say there's other versions, there's other types out there, but for the most part, that's all you get. And that's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's very, very limiting. And, you know, they say that this is the only book you need. Well, if that's the all we get choices-wise for Zords, no, this actually will require an expansion. At least for the Zords, because... Some of us are going to want to use stuff like the Ninja Zords or, you know, other types of Dino Zords or maybe uh, certain other types of Vehicle Zords, like the Rescue Zords. You know, it, there's a whole bunch of opportunities for expansion on that, and that's not good. But the Spectrum aspect is where I have to so no, you fucked this up because that limits what kind of Zord you could have. And there, there were other things, but the but the key thing that I wanted to focus on is the, is that is that obsession, which may have, may have worked for may have worked for Heroes of the Grid, but you can but for a role playing game you cannot get away with that. Um, it's a it's a case of something working in one medium not working in another. Now the other. The other, the other reason why I'm why I'm harsh on this is that there, there's are there's already been a handful of of um not of in all but name, um Togusat's TTRPGs over over the past twenty years. Um, Mecha versus Kaiju is is certainly one example. Um, Hen Henshin and Radical Teens using Powered by the Apocalypse are two are two different examples, and e and even um, and even the latter one um, did the smart thing and, and built around archetypes instead of colors, and that was that was something I got for free. <laughs> um, so when a, when plus the, plus there's been there's been a litany there's been a litany of games um, that that have ha that have handled that have handled the subject matter in the um, fa in the fan made sphere. As as much as I as much as I ragged on writer. Um, it had a better under it had a better understanding of this, and while that's a different type of Togusats, the f the point is is that much le much like with Avatar, when other people have done it before, you've got re you've got a prime amount of research material to to build off of. But but with all but with all of that in mind, <sighs> in the Im with all of that in mind, with the fact that this clearly needs a needs a major ass rewrite. In the words of Adam Blompier, the man formerly known as Plumpy, "Let me have a go." <sighs> I think we're gonna get some use out of that in the coming months, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> For sure. And. Now, uh, before before I think before we get into the particulars of the of the Ranger Spectrum and the like, um, we need to we need to address the core system, the core of of the Essence Twenty system, which if if it's any indi which if any if it's any indication, um, I feel sorry I feel sorry for TJ Omega because when the Transformers game comes out, he's gonna get a bunch of people asking him about it. Oh yeah, and well, as far as the GI Joe one, oh, uh, this isn't GI Joe's first rodeo. At least there isn't art theft involved. Yeah, because that was a thing. And although truth, although truth be told, if someone really wanted to do a GI Joe RPG, I'd I just tell them, um, go play go play Spycraft. <laughs> I mean, Spycraft, Ops and Tactics. There's no. 
there you can pr you can pretty much get the GI Joe feel just from those kind of games. B and I the other reason I fear f the other reason I fear for it is because well, you know you know the rant that we did w with that with um with with the Ranger Spectrum and Zords. Imagine that with mm -hmm. different Transformers. Oh Lord. Yeah. How would they even? How would they even? Oh, I'm. I. I'm not liking that thought. That thought sounds terrible. Well, let me make it worse. Imagine how they're going to handle guest alts. I'm not going to ask the question because I already know your answer. <laughs> but I need. I need to. Um, we need to cover the Essence Twenty system, which. You know, it's it's kind of funny that it's kind of funny that I was worried that this was going to be D, that this was going to be D, that they were going to take D and D and put it into Power Rangers. Um, in hindsight, maybe they should have. Now, the idea with the Essence system is it is D, it is D twenty based with your but using skills with your with the D twenty with um your skill die being a being a different die code, kind of like what Savage Worlds does. However, there is. However, the the problem is not is not in the fact that they did that, but how. Now, I do like the fact that you have four pr that you have four primary stats: strength, speed, smarts, and social. And you do get you do get automatic you do get automatic adjustments when you as you level up. I'm perfectly fine. As well as the fact that they that each of them has their own little defense, which makes me ask, why didn't they do that for um, fifth edition? But I'm getting ahead of myself. The the st the um, skill die range from D2, D4, D6, D8, D10, and D12. Now, the idea is you roll you roll D you roll a D20. Plus your plus your skill die. So if you have strength, athletics at D six, you'd roll D twenty plus D six. Compare that to a target number. The default is fifteen, and that determines whether or not you succeed. But then we get to specializations, and this was the moment that made me snap. Now, <sighs> specializations is not is certainly nothing is certainly nothing new. And especially, especially in skill-based systems, we've seen we've seen it plenty of times in some of our in some of our works, Zan. That's and, very true. But here, here, but the problem is is um how is how is how specializations are handled. So if you if you're rolling just strength athletics, like I mentioned before, then it's going to be like it's going to be like that. But let's say you have a specialization in um, running. And the, and you use that specialization in this in this role. The way that specializations work is you roll the you roll the d20 plus your skill die, as well as every die type under it. So in this situation, you would roll uh, you would roll d6, d4, and d2, and add all of them together. Now that alone is very swingy, but don't worry, it gets worse. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Now, since this is a D tw now since this is a D twenty based system, logically speaking, how do you think a critical would happen? Double die, Obvious. or at the very least, a natural twenty. That would be the logical approach. A natural twenty, a flat five percent. Well, and well, I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of of that flat five percent. At the at the very least, it's at the very least, it's an established thing that you can build people around. Or an or a nat one if you're using inversion tw inversion twenty, um, which is which is all about rolling under. But I'm getting ahead of myself. However, that's not the approach that they did. The approach that they did is, if your if your skill die is the maximum result. So on a d6, if I rolled a six for that, then that would count as a critical. 
This creates two major problems. One, for the math nerds, this means that the chances for critical become ridi become ridiculously s fucky. <laughs> is the best way to put it. Now you well, can't crit it... on a D2, but D4, 25%. D6, le these up up until up until um up until D12 up until um. Up until you get beyond D12, which you can only get by shifting, you get less and less of a chance to crit. Except if you do specialization, because remember, you only need one of those die to crit in order for, in order for it's, you only need one of those die to get the max result in order to crit. Yep. And yeah, that creates a problem. Even even then. Um... Even if you, as you go up the die, you only get less and less chance to crit. Uh, compared to the five percent of a nat twenty on a d twenty, every one of those lower dice still has an overall higher percentage to crit. Mm -hmm. And the the big this is this is why this is why I I said that this is this is going to be very swingy and. The thing is, with with some with a game like this, you should be leaning towards people being able to fulfill multiple roles. Whereas this kind of approach almost incentivizes hyper focus in a specific set of skills, aka min maxing. Mm -hmm. As a bit of an aside, um, initiative as a skill is a dumb idea, and there's a reason nobody really does it. Wait, uh, the closest. The closest thing I can think of that that recently did it, what well, isn't very recent, it's three with the improved initiative feat. Yeah, but initiative wasn't a skill. This is true. I said that's my closest thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, because improved initiative was a pay not to suck, essentially. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I'd really... The, you may have noticed that your that um your core ability, unlike a lot of other games, doesn't factor into this, and that's apparently because where it fa where it factors into is things like your defense and your skill points, because the amount of points you have in one of the four in one of the essences, one of the four S's, determines the amount of the amount of skill points you have to distribute among skills, which I'm. Um, I'm perfectly fine with I'm perfectly fine with that, but the problem is it me the problem is that it me it means that having that um when it comes to the direct input for for es for the essences they don't aside from this aside from that skill point thing they don't really matter. It's just skill points and derived matters. That's the only time that they seem to matter, and I really feel that's a problem because you're putting way too much faith in just the dice. And this is this isn't a this isn't say Savage Worlds where everything's built everything's built around just rolling two dice. And he, and even then there are way there are ways to circumvent this swinginess problem. You should not be praying to the dice gods, is all I'm saying. <laughs> and as we all know, they show no mercy. Amen. Um, Amen. Amen. Um so I th I think one of I think one of the key things that we'd have that we'd have to tackle is how is adjusting this because this because this skill system is at is at the crux of everything. So that's some that's something that we need to adjust. Um, if I'm be if I'm being honest, I th I there's a cup there's a couple ways I think this could be done. One is one is the idea that um. Your skip that your you um your your um essence determines a determines a default die instead instead of the individual skill, but having points and skills gives you multiple die and you just roll the highest. Uh, the other the other possible the other possibility I was thinking is. Instead, instead of just using a bunch of die codes, just st just stick with d sixes. 
you want this you want this game to be you're going to be getting a bunch of people who haven't touched a TTRPG with this and are probably Ranger fans first. So why not go why not go with that? But which do you which do you which do you think would be a bet would be a better move? Mm. Cuz the th the thing that needs to be adjusted is to make the die system a little bit less swingy. Um <clears throat> If if you're going to have a system where you roll attribute plus skill, which is essentially what this is, mm -hmm. it's almost always better to have the dice pool be all the same dice. All the same dice type. Mm -hmm. Because that flattens the curve on the bell curve to a point where the averages actually matter. It's the reason D6 games do it with a bunch of D6s. It's the reason uh, World of Darkness games uses a bunch of D10s. Mm -hmm. uh, it, so for me, if I were going to try and make the game more stable and less swingy, uh, I would use something like maybe D8s for when you're not morphed. And I assume that when you morph, your die type goes up because you mentioned shifting going to d20s. Um, um, there, there is a mechanic. There's a mechanic called the sliding dice shift, which uh -oh. basically takes the pl takes the place of situational plus, um, plus two minus two kind of things. Oh. So the way the way that it, um, this is the the um the table for it is shown on page eighty nine of the PDF. Okay. And it's in a weird in a weird way it's not it's kind of similar to the um dice ladder that was in fate. Although since it isn't fate, it's slightly better. And a lot yeah. a lot of a lot of effects when they wanna give when they wanna confer some sort of bonus, they'll write it they'll write it out as um shift up or shift down. Okay. This I'm not so sure that just makes things more swingy in this system though. A dice ladder in general. It's going to make things even more swingy. Yeah, I just I just wanted to clarify that since you the the difference between morphed and unmorphed seems to be um boosting boosting defenses and get and getting access to um, morphed weapons, which not affecting your actual skills, whatever they might be, doesn't that, make sense either. Yeah. Um. And that's something we can address when we dress more into skills. If we're just talking about leveling out the dice, in my opinion, it needs to be that your dice pools are all the same dice faces. Whatever whatever dice dice type you choose, whether that's D8s, D10s, D6s, whatever, everything needs to be the same. Um, how how about this? Okay. Your your essence is the base number of d8s that you're going to roll. Okay. You only get you only get d10s from skills. You only you get d10s from skills and you get d12 and you get um d12s from specializations. Okay. Um the approach the approach that I'm going with is you're not if you the way that the way that I'm going with this is instead of doing skill levels, which given how given how the game wants to be simple, I don't think fits what we're doing here. So untrained, trained, and then specialized is basically yeah. what you're looking at. Um, Zan, in our in our project, we I've kind of had I've kind of had a three tiered system of skills of um, untrained, trained, and origin. And the approach that I'm going with is if you're if you're untrained, you roll just you roll just your essence in d8s mm -hmm. if you are trained you roll your you roll um d, you roll your essence in d10s okay if you're specialized you roll your essence in d12s that, that makes a lot more sense that might seem a bit swingy but the the re i think the reason it balances out is the fact that um as you as you get as you get bigger and bigger potential results you don't, you um you have you have to it ha the the um the pool in which you can use it 
is smaller and smaller. Like using yeah. strength, there's a lot of things you can do with just a strength roll. Athletics, slightly less. Running, well, all you can do is that with is, with that is run. Yeah, and it's not it's not as swinging as the system they have because you have the same dice floor for everything. One, and as you go up in tier, since you're using the same dice, you'll still also have the same dice ceiling among among all dice being rolled. Um, but each tier increases your ceiling t uh, in between them, which is good because a higher ceiling means higher potential success. Mm -hmm. So I I can see that. Um, as far as as far as crits, instead of instead of going with critical success or crit fail, I would I'm I'm considering doing a stunt system. The idea the idea being, if you if you roll um if you roll sets something extra happens that you get to describe or, um to put to um to pander to shades for a bit. How do you want to do this? <laughs> the idea the idea being in. Instead of having criticals be a on-off thing, the the idea the idea is if you if you um if you roll a if you roll a set something um extra things happen. For instance, which inst would make sorry, go ahead. For instance, if you, this mean this means that you can have if you roll if you roll a if you roll a if you make if you make that same athletics roll that we talked about before. And you roll, and you roll, um, and you manage to succeed and get and roll a couple of eights, for instance. Then you succeed, and something and something even better happens. I.e., you man, you if you're, let's say, let's say you're using it because you're trying to get you're trying to get away from some putties or something. You man, you man, you manage to get enough distance that you can hide and they won't be able to find you. Um, if you fail. Then you not only fail, but the DM gets to put some extra complication on it as well. I'm kind of take I'm kind of cribbing notes from Eclipse phase with this, just just with a tiered setup. So, um, essentially, if if you say had three strength essence, mm -hmm. and you're doing that athletic athletics roll, mm -hmm. so you're you're rolling three d ten. And you and you exceed you successfully achieve or, or exceed the success threshold, and you have two eights to uh, basically a matching pair. You'd get like a minor stunt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Which for something like Power Rangers, having that extra little bit of showmanship would probably not be pre would be pretty good. You know, kind of help create the, the the feel. Yeah, I honestly think that. A game like this demands a stunt system. Yeah, I'm I'm totally okay with a stunt system instead of a crit system. Yeah, um, I agree. Because let's let's be honest here. Um, critical systems, like the the Power Rangers, any Power Rangers, um, critical hits aren't really critical hits. They are themselves a form of showmanship. Yeah. They, uh, they cause explosions and magical lights and lasers and everything goes... You get you get a lot out of some sort of finishing move or uh, absolute advantage. Um, so a stunt system is absolutely a much better fit. Here, let me let me let me uh, let me put it from a, a, a Ranger fan's perspective to give you an idea and to kind of help explain to people what we're getting at here. Let's say you're in a combat with a monster, and you decide you know you pull out your blaster and you decide to fire some shots at it. If you get this the, this the stunt roll, you get a success and you get like let's say, well you roll three d ten or you roll forty ten and you get two pair, you in with a success, mm -hmm. you can. Go full on and turn it into a full on, you know, just for as a joke. Get a full on Cal explosion going on. Three sets of explosions does extra damage. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Inc incidentally, I, I now one one my an argument that I've heard is that the balance, the meta that is trying to go for is this idea of you're trading away the possibility for for criticals 
with get with getting more with getting um high, with getting higher results. If it weren't for the fact that you're that you don't have a baseline to fall back on, I'd be will I'd be willing to buy that. But that isn't what that isn't what's happening here. There is also the fact that um the game has an extra effort system known as hero points, which is understandable. You know, with the, with well you being with you being heroes and and the like. And most games have some sort of extra effort system. The problem is one of the one of the ways that you can spend one of the ways that you can spend that those hero points is to make a role treated treated as if it's a specialization role, even if it isn't. That was that was the reason why that was the reason why I was so I was so angry. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. It's like, well, then what's the you know that that just makes it more. You're just adding a point to make things more complicated. Yay! <laughs> uh, now, as far as how we'd handle the, handle um, situational modifiers, um, I think I th an easy way to do it: have the GM award more or less dice. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Bonus yeah. and anti a bonus and anti bonus dice. That's that's par for the course with dice pools. So I yeah. don't see why it wasn't done. Yeah. For example, let's say you're getting trying to leap over a wall. And one of your friends offers to help you. That gives you an extra. That gives you an extra advantage. Bonus, bonus dice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, since I since we got that out of, out of our system, I, I that was a, that, I I I had intended to kind of go in chapter or, chapter order about what we um what we'd adjust, but I had to get that out of my system because that's kind of the linchpin. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when it comes to no, we'll get we'll get into we'll get into the roll we'll get into the roll thing in in a in a moment, but the first thing that I wanted to get into is what it refers to as origins, and the or the origin seems to be the equivalent of a race in a fantasy game based on how based on how they're based on how they're described. Um, the I don't but I don't think I don't think we'd have to change too much about. How, about the or, about the origins, they they um they fit they fit most of the archetypes that we that we see th that we see throughout the series. Yeah, this this like looking through this this didn't bother me at all because it's like this covers every kind of potential character you would kind of create in a Power Rangers universe. You've got the obvious stuff, you know. You've got the brainy one. You've got the athletic one. You've got the kind one. You've got the oddball. You know, popular, rebellious, like th this all in hell. They even got a tragic one if you really want to go there. Mm -hmm. Like they cover pretty much every kind of potential backstory you would have for a character. So credit where credit is due. There's good here. As a bit of an aside, I need to get going. Good. I need to get going, guys. Uh, all, right. all right, have a good night. All right, kiss. Stay frosty. Bit of an aside. Um, I'm pretty sure. So I'm pretty sure somebody thought that the Alpha Five text boxes in the in the book were cute, but. Truth be told, they don't really do anything. I see what they're going for. It's basically a TLDR, but you don't really need a TLDR in a book like this. No, the the way that sidebars should be used is to get is to give certain contexts, or 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 a or a why we designed it this way kind of thing. Um, Mutants and Masterminds revised. Had a series of text boxes called "Under the Hood," where they went into the the um, reasoning for some of the design choices. And um, "Heavens and Heresies," the the game we the game we I was talking about with Zan and a few others um, earlier earlier today was uh, is going to have that with two, with two characters having two different in universe perspectives. See, that's the that's the better way to do it. In fact, in fact, you could ease you could easily do that with um, one one voice representing say say um, Zordon and the other voice representing Zed in this kind of book. Yeah. In, in, it might it might go a bit of a way to the weirdest way the introduction chapter is written, where it seems to be written as as if you're getting as if you're um, supposed to hear it in Zordon's voice. But 
The uh, but again the or, the origin part the I think the only things that we'd have to change are, would just be in reflection to the way we've changed the core system, which doesn't which means we wouldn't have to change too much about them. No, might, no, it's... might have to might have to rewrite some of the some of the fluff, but that's it. Um, then we get to the roles, which is where they do the whole thing about the ranger spectrum. Uh, real quick, before we go into that, before we go into this proper, I have to make a little bit of a side because I just noticed the artwork for the for this chapter, and I have to call out something. What? Take a look at Green. Oh yeah, the, and we thought it, and we thought it was bad when he had a silver stripe. Yeah, now this this is just the full on. They decided like for all the other Rangers, everyone looks great, like red, blue, pink, black, yellow, even white looks perfect. But for whatever reason, they decided that for green, they were going to use the Bat in the Sun variety of the Green Ranger. I am so sick of this fucking design. And I don't even understand why, because all the other ones are, pr are pretty much to a T, the, um, the show and early comic um, counterparts. It's because it's, it's, again, appealing to the JDF fans. That's all that is, because the only... The only times, the only times, the only time this ever showed up was in one episode of Dino Thunder, and it was almost going to be in Mega Force, but Fan Backlash forced them to change it back. Mm -hmm. But this it, design, it does not, it was not meant to exist. It is purely to stroke JDF's ego, and it drives me up a fucking wall. Did, did they seriously include the Lord Dracon version of? Of the of Tommy. No, 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 no. This Green. is this isn't the Lord Dracon version. This is just a slightly modified version that JDF had Bat in the Sun make for him for a lot of his Green Ranger appearances. The most notable is when he did that one combat, that one versus series that they did, where he fought. Uh, it was a scorpion. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the version by the actual leg of the main Green Ranger that's holding Saba. No, the, now, the, the White Ranger looks fine. It's mm -hmm. just the Green Ranger. Well, no, because if you look at the White Ranger page, it's the normal White Ranger. We're not looking from... at that. He's looking at page 29. Uh, uh, no, I'm the... comparing I'm comparing the two. Uh, if you look at the normal White Ranger, it looks like the normal Die Ranger White Ranger without an MMPR buckle. But if you look at the, the White Ranger that is hiding between that white space between uh, the Green Ranger's arm and leg, that looks like Lord Dracon's arm uh, uh, arm gauntlets, and he's holding Saba, and the helmet looks different. I'm pretty sure that's Lord Dracon. Yeah, there's been there's been some complaints <clears throat> about the art about the art throughout the book. Some people saying that it's low resolution. But I'm I'm wondering why they would include him as a Green Ranger at all. That's what I'm saying. He's a villain. Yeah, that's absolutely Lord Dracon. The 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 green. Uh, bracers on the arms, the white bodysuit, the Green Ranger. Oh yeah, I see it on page forty-two. Yeah, that's definitely Draken. I recognize yeah. that outfit anywhere. Because again, you know, I'll just try to say it. They're sucking JDF's dick again. Yeah, I yeah. Think, I, I th what I remember that there was a. I remember that there were a few variant covers that did this whole a bu uh, bunch of different um, color representations. Mm -hmm. And the Bat in the Sun version of the Green Ranger is the main Green Ranger on the actual Green Ranger page, too, I might add. So, Yeah, um, I hate it. I fucking hate it. But no, no, no the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Actually, no, on the main Green Ranger page, they have the original. That's the original Green Ranger. Are you sure he has the white stripe on his ch underneath him and everything? On page 42? Yeah. No, that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing original Green Ranger. Um, Proper. The tr the kick is the helmet. The helmet is the giveaway. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I see what you're saying. Never yeah. mind. But with the the problem the problem there the problem that I have with the with this with this um ranger with the way they do the ranger spectrum is again this is clear the, one this is clearly built around the the way those colors were presented in um MMPR. Yeah. Now, two is two is the fact that the 
the way th the way that it's pre the way that it's presented. Um. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm just gonna get into it. Why the f why in God's green earth is White Ranger or something you have to prestige into? The only, uh, the only, no, the, the only there's an explanation. I oh, I I know what their explanation is, and it's bullshit. And what's and and they said you know how they said that this is the only book you, you already mentioned. They said that this is the only book you'll need for for this stuff. While this core rulebook details the rules for the advanced spectrum role of the White Ranger, future publications will allow for other, even rarer spectrum roles for Silver Rangers, Gold Rangers, Phantom Rangers, Purple Rangers, and more. Oh! I am even. All I, all I hear are two words <laughs> live service. I hate. Games as a service. Uh, you're not alone in that one, Zan. Look, I get it. So, I get it. Sometimes, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you run. You run out of space, or you run out of time. Um, but in the but in this but I'm not willing to excuse this given the amount given the amount of time that they had. Yeah. Also, like again, it, it's very clear. Even if they had all the time in the world, it wouldn't matter because all they wanted to do was base this on MMPR, and it's so fucking obvious mm -hmm. i mean white ranger is yes i'm i'm just skimming over it right now ranger and zord is one that's only because of the white tiger zord that's literally only because of the white tiger zord all the other white rangers they show which some technically aren't even white rangers <clears throat> i won't get into that uh do not control their zords as a singular uh ranger and zord in one this is no. bullshit. This is bullshit. <laughs> Do you see why even I'm pissed about this? Like, it's so... This right here, this one chapter more than any other restricts the kind of characters you can create. Why bother making this complex character when you're just going to be stuck as an MMPR color anyway? And I would... To, to further to further um, demonstrate this point, I would like to... Re I would like to read off... The, what the um black the um, the flavor text for the Black Ranger, quote, Rangers that are imbued with the black energy of the Morphin Grid tend to be social charmers, entertainers, and the real life of the party. They are the personification of team unity, and a lot of what they do helps keep the bonds between members strong and tight. Black Rangers are equally adept at fighting back to back with their friends, showing that the team comes first and always ready to stand up for any part of it. One collective way that the that Black Rangers tend to reach their teammates th with their special brand of reinforcing positivity is through light-hearted behaviors, not commonly found in a staunch warrior. Whether that is through telling one-liner jokes, harmless limericks or rhymes, singing pleasant tunes, or maybe even showing with a little personal dance, Black Rangers find their own way to connect to team members, connect their team members to themselves and each other. The only one, the only Black Ranger you can really apply that with is Zack. Yeah. Yeah. Even like the, even Adam while he had the jokes was a uh, was not nearly the jokester and dancer that that Zach was. And no, that was more rocky if anything. On the on the page on the on the art that they use consider the representatives that they that they have to to go with it. And um um I see it's a little bit hard to see, but I see I see Shadow Ra I see Shadow Ranger from SPD in that, which definitely does. Anubis is definitely not a jokester. Um, no. Um, RPM Black definitely not. De absolutely n only a jokester in the smartass way. Yeah. Um, I see I see uh, uh, Akitar Black. Mm hmm. Which... He's a fucking alien. They didn't get jokes at all. Yeah. Um. We had what I want you, Gene. <laughs> Got Wild Force Black, who was he was he was more of the good he was more of the goody two shoes of the group. I'd I'd say he I'd say he was more of the as much as I hate to use the term gentle giant. Yeah, no, that fits. I, 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 uh, oh, and hold, hold on, Magna Defender. Why don't we talk about that for a fucking minute? <laughs> Neither incarnation of the Magna Defender could be considered the jokester. And in the case no. of the original, that would be highly inappropriate. I, <laughs> yeah. I, um, 
I, I, like, I hate to bring up Sentai compared to Rangers, because this is based on Rangers. Mm -hmm. But if you look at a lot of the blacks throughout history, not counting Goandr, because Goandr Black is a big jokester. <laughs> um, but I think most of the blacks you run into that are that are counted as blacks in 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 Sentai um, are pretty serious people. And the and the one I think of most when I hear this. It, well, the two I think of most that I, when I hear this are either going to be Bokenger Black, or, or yeah, Boken Black, or um, or Kyoryu Black. They're both like Boken Black is a no nonsense badass who literally spun his ex his ex cellular off of the shot of the bad guy because that's how fucking cool he is. Um, and of course, uh, Kyoryu Black. He's a, he's fucking just he too was, cool for school sniper boy. Yeah, he, he was a, he was a fucking ladies man. <laughs> yeah, that was his deal. He was a he was a badass ladies man. Though ironically, their Power Ranger counterparts definitely fit the archetype they're going for here. Yes, you know, Dino Charge Black was definitely the jokester of the group. He he was the he was the he was the kind of laid back, just do whatever kind of the guy. And do I even need to get started on Operation Overdrive Black? Let's not and say we didn't. We already <laughs> did the rebuild of that, damn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're we not don't, wrong. We don't need to go back into it. Yeah. We're no, rebuilding we this right now. <laughs> but That's my point, but I agree with you. <laughs> in but in my in my not so humble opinion, I'd I'd if someone were if someone were to ask me what the um what the prime poster child for the archetype of a black of a black Sentai member is, it's Guy Yuki. Black Condor. Yeah. The way I've the way I've always seen the bl the black, um, Senshi, is that they are some they are somebody who, in if it, if it weren't for I I like to I like to picture them as an Asura. There's somebody who, in the in the right circumstances, may have been may have been the red and ha and has the leadership qualities and the charisma to pull that off. The only thing that stops them is their own personal baggage. Oh, now, and I... fair, now fair being fair, that's the Sentai mm -hmm. setup, which understandably doesn't quite fit here. Yeah, but there's a lot of that aspect in. The Power Rangers universe too, and again, like the that, like moving on to the next paragraph of that fluff text, actually is a better description of a Black Ranger. Good leaders, when a Ranger more dedicated to leadership, like a Red or White Ranger, isn't available for the team, Black Rangers often step up and take the role. Their dedication to team strength and cooperation put them in a great place to make collective plans, and their teammates rarely have the reason to question what motivates a Black Ranger. While they tend to be the glue between the members of the team, standing at its forefront is just as natural to them. Mm -hmm. That pretty much describes what you were just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's as bad as bad as it is with the as bad as it is with black. Um, blue was a it was particularly egregious because again, it's very clear they want people to be Billy with that. What with it being described as the team technician and the brainy one. And with the examples they give on on that on the page, um, like they let's use Wild Force Blue for example. Why is Signal <laughs> Man on that fucking page? <laughs> fuck it, Blue Centurion. The fuck? <laughs> I I call him Signal what Man. What page are we on? Um, we're on page uh, right, thirty-seven. Right now. Thirty-six. Mm -hmm. 36. Oh, well. mm -hmm. Thank you. Thirty-seven. But yeah, if Wild Force Blue. Yeah. Um. Definitely not the team technician. Definitely not the brainy one. If anything, he was more like the Black Ranger they described than the Blue. Yeah, I see Ninja on the thing where where the only where the only technician about him was no, was knowing ninja magic. Um. <laughs> SPD Blue? No, no. He was the biggest. SPD Blue was the second in command. He was the second in command and a bit of a stiff neck. Yeah. yeah. I mean, actually, I would ha I would have to say that SPD got the um, the Ao Oni Aka Oni relationship between Red and Blue that came from the original Deca Ranger pretty good. Mm 
Yeah, yeah. No, no, I agree. Uh, a stiff neck and and kind of, and and then of course we we have uh, Dino Charge Blue who um in the original Sentai I, I keep comparing but I have to because the, the, the source material um is the black that they were just describing the jokester who was also kind of a cool family man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, uh, you want the ultimate example of a Blue Ranger that does not fit this archetype? Hi there, Operation Overdrive again. <laughs> as as, uh, as, as, as it would be to bring up Operation Overdrive once again, um, I'd also point out th that hidden hidden away uh, hidden away close to the page lining is is blue is Jungle Fury. And once now, again, he was, he was more of he was more of a stiff neck who had to learn how to relax. You could argue that Jungle Fury Blue def fits the brains over brawn archetype. I I give him that, but the team technician definitely fucking not. No. <laughs> I am annoyed, and I'm only getting more annoyed. Yeah. Yeah. The more you look at this, the more this description Mi just fury. Help, Mystic Force Blue for fuck's sake. <laughs> My you just keep fighting this shit. We're Monk, not even trying. This this entire roles chapter is the equivalent of my picture, the one that I'm about to post in council. You know the picture, I'm sure. Oh, boy, oh god, I, I need to know where this is going. I, need, I, I, I know think... exactly where this is going, but I mean, it's it, I th this picture. There's there's no other way to describe this fucking chapter. Uh, where is it? This one. This one right here. <laughs> Look at the file name, Shades. I, I can't see the file name. Um, put if it you in, put it in, put it in Chrome. It says longer. The worse it gets. Yeah, that, that yeah. is the equivalent of this entire fucking chapter. The longer we look, the worse it fucking gets. All right. So with that being said, allow me to throw out one, two possible ways you could fix this. Okay, now, lay it on me. The first is the obvious one. Just have the colors be something you could choose willy-nilly. Easy solution. But let's say that you that somebody higher up has insisted that the colors have to add something to the character creation. That you have to get some kind of bonus or, or growth or something to it. Okay, fine. You can have that. Here's how you do this. Have... Each color have subtypes. Have different subtypes of each color that more fit with the different variations we've come across and that we've explained as we've gone on. Mm -hmm. You can have a blue that's the dirty, the techie and brainy type, but you can also have a blue who is the stiff, second-in-command kind of character as well. You can have other types to go along with that. The bottom line here is is that you don't just have one type of blue or one type of red. You have different types that fit the overall spectrum. Now, in our, I, I can easily hear the argument made that the personality types that we've talked about with, that we've talked about um, and that you just mentioned fit within the origin part of character creation, which I would be perfectly willing to go with. But and but here's the problem. The way that the the way that the spectrum is described is assigning is assigning behavioral traits to colors. Behavioral yeah. traits, and because of the assignment of those behavioral traits, it also assigns mechanics associated with those behavioral traits. Mm -hmm. Because if you yeah. look, it, going back to the Black Ranger, since it's the first in the list, mm -hmm. um, if you look at the the actual role perks you get during your level up uh you get uh things like heart of the team which ties into a quips and speeches mm -hmm. which is it's very very much again tying back into that one description of of the of the glue made of dance song and jokes mm -hmm. um so by adding in the subtype variations, you're also going to have to add in role perk changes and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And you might want to change the quips and speeches item, whatever it is. It's still the unique resource of the Black Ranger, whatever we're going to call it, 
to something a little more generic sounding. Because Quips yeah. and Speeches is very, very uh, specific to what behavior you're using. Yeah. But you personally, um, since, you know, with the with the Black Ranger, we do have, as we discussed, a lot of those guys are the dudes who step forward when no one else is there to lead. They're, and but and they're also the team glue. Mm -hmm. How they how they manifest as the team glue, how they manifest as that guy who steps forward when no one else can is widely varies widely varies yeah so now, actually let's let's take this to the the logical extreme because there's one color that we have yet to talk about that many people will try to argue as the as the as the counterpoint to this whole idea we're throwing out that of course being the red mm -hmm. the team leader however you know it's, it's the two traits to describe stand tall and fierce always ready to help okay that does describe 90% of reds, but here's the thing. Even amongst that, there are different types of reds. You've got some that are stoic and strong, you know, your typical Jason archetype. Mm -hmm. But you also have those who are naive and just kind of thrown into the mix. Hell, I'd say Troy fits that to some extent. <laughs> you know? Bad writing notwithstanding. And, um, Bad writing notwithstanding. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to point out that... Some of the so the descriptors we saw in black and on blue were fairly specific. You know, d we see dance, song, jokes, and good leaders, and we saw a uh, team technician and brains over brawn. But the descriptors of um, of stand tall and fierce and always ready to help describes every fucking Power Ranger. Exactly my point. Every. Yeah. Fucking ranger! This description is bullshit. Do you see why we're all pissed off at this, people? <laughs> and one Boy. might one might argue one might argue why 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 this is why this is so why this is so egregious. I mean, what I mean, um, there I mean, there's there's color there's color rules in um in some of the other takes. I think the I think what I think what makes this I think what makes this all the more egregious is the fact that is the fact that when you have that level of a budget the expectations change much in the same to use a to use a bit of a comparative example um I have I have ripped into Warhammer Plus for a while and that, and yes drink for GW but I'm going somewhere with this I um. I remember when I saw the first episode of one of the, of one of their touted animations, Hammer and Bolter. And it's not very good. It definitely has the atmosphere when it comes to the when it comes to the music and voice acting end, but the actual animation is barely animation. It tries way too hard to look like the art style of Mike Mignola. Way too hard and has about as much animation as a motion comic. Now, if this was a fan, now if it was a fan work done by a dozen people, I would be praising it to the high heavens. But because of the fact that it's an official work, it is subpar. Also, also, it ends up making Astartes look even better because that was all done by one fucking guy. So, I, I, I was doing a small little overview here of some of the other sections something else i'd like to point out there is actually a third paragraph uh heading just after the tables that show their level up perks and everything yeah that's that's a fit that's a failure of formatting if you ask me yeah but but I, the reason i'm pointing it out is because it's a third descriptor for the class mm -hmm. or for the role like black rangers get stalwart anchors and then it talks about their zord but then Blue Ranger gets a stoic role, and it talks about what makes them stoic, and then talks about their swords. Mm -hmm. And and then going to Red Ranger, um, Red Ranger gets a long and noble line, and it doesn't talk about their fucking sword at all. Again, oh, d d d consistent. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure. If, I'm pretty sure if he was I'm pretty sure if. I'm pretty sure if this if this was a, if he was at Maddie levels of of angry he'd be talking in French right now. 
<laughs> I think he, yeah, I think he would be at this point. I, am... I, I don't blame Zan at all. Like, I laugh, but only because I agree with him. Like, it's so inconsistent. Like, there's there's nothing about this that makes any sense. And it, it, it again, again, going back to that image, the more you look at it, the worse it gets. There's just it's it, not only is it in, inconsistent uh in the descriptors or in or in any of the like pictures and such the inconsistency is even in um just ha like the specificity it's it's extremely specific with the black ranger and the blue ranger it gets way less specific with the red ranger there's some intermediate spe specificity with the pink ranger there's some extremely specific stuff with the green ranger because it, it, it outright says reader repulsa created the green ranger i'm like uh... <laughs> 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 because 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 of that i am i think i honestly think that much as i hate to admit it the colors thing has to go we need to be yeah. we need to build around um archetypes yes yeah i agree because this also leaves it open for you to use whatever colors you fucking want i mean granted you, you you know the dm should at least try to keep it a consistent group of colors but how many ranger seasons did not have this color scheme i mean yeah everyone you're gonna have at least you're guaranteed to have a red and most likely a blue but aside from that it's open season on what colors you pick from there mm -hmm. usually you usually if you're looking at them, red, blue, yellow at the very least. But that still varies from show to show. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> gran granted, There's been plenty so of seasons without a yellow. Yeah, so yeah, sometimes for legitimate reasons, other times for less legitimate reasons. Hi, Cured Uger. <laughs> oh, the, the argument for that is so fucking hilarious. Like, they, yeah, someone at Toei didn't want a Yellow Ranger for Kyo Uger because it was both, they, 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 want, they didn't want too many females in it. You guys do know that in Sentai, yellow is usually male, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> so, in this case, we need to consider what roles, okay. what archetypes are consistent across the five-man band and sixth extra ranger, which is the usual consistency for a ranger group. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. That's the general usual thing. Um, and since we're going with MMPR, you know, that was a pretty consistent thing, five or six for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, I think now, I think with, I think with the basics, I think with the basic six, um, we can, we can very easily reskin these into archetypes just referred to as the blank. Um, kind of, kind of like the archetypes we saw in some powered by the apocalypse stuff. Yes. Okay. Um. And for, like, for instance, let for instance, let's use um, bl let's you go paid turn to page thirty on the P on the PDF numbering or, p or okay. page twenty eight if you're looking at the page numbering on the on the PDF. Okay. Where, where they have a table on the on the spectrum and a and a brief description for each one, um, the bl the black. I think so. Um, uh, there's the we can still take these. Mm -hmm. Ignore the energy color. Uh. The, the first description, a skilled warrior whose charm and personality helps form the bonds between their team. Mm -hmm. What word fits that or what description fits that as a one word, the blank? I've got my own ideas, but I'd like to hear your guys' take. I'm waiting on Shades because Shades has good ideas for this, honestly. <laughs> Like, wow. really good ideas. I appreciate the vote of confidence there, man. Uh, let's see. Charm and personality forming bonds. Honestly, considering what they're going for here, the archetype being based on Zack, I think the best term would be the performer. Okay. Um, I, was, yeah, I was going with something very, uh, very simple. 
because you know it's forming the bonds between the team, charm and personality. Uh, they're the mediator, I guess is the best way to put it. That one works too. That works too. I think I like Thor's better. I think I think the me- I'm leaning more towards the mediator because the performer is going to have some con- going to have some assumptions that aren't go- that aren't going to fit. Could be a yeah, subtype. That- that actually would fit into the next category, the next chapter. Admittedly, yeah. what I was going for, because there is another more another thing of a descriptors coming up in the next chapter. But I so I think the mediator would probably be a better setup for that. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the performer could be a subtype. Um, I'll con- I'll consider I'll consider that in a in a moment. Um, then we get to blue, which is descri- which the description reads: a clever technology expert with the strongest understanding of the Morphin grid. So basically, basically our tech guy, and honestly, I think this is very simple: the technician. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking too. I was thinking either and the technician or the expert. The technician is much better because expert can be very vague. Uh, and with green, it is capable of working at a team, but excels at surviving against, surviving against all odds. I'm gonna go with the meme here, monk, the struggler. We are not doing guts as a ranger. That is a terrifying guts is, idea. <laughs> guts is absolutely a green ranger. Fuck no. you. <laughs> <laughs> e- even if he wears all black and the berserk armor is black, his soul is a green ranger. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, th- I had to go with the meme. It was there. Yeah, we we obviously can't u- we obviously can't use that. Um, <laughs> I I am I am honestly th- I'm honestly thinking uh, um because because of because of that of that whole of that whole survival thing plus the way Green is described as the as some as uh, something of the odd man out. I'm thinking the wild card. Yeah, a kitty fuda, something that you keep that you keep is the ace up your sleeve. Mm-hmm. I can see the wild card. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely down that. Um, then we have then we have pink, which is descri- which is described as an eagle-eyed sharpshooter, always aware of their surroundings. This the surroundings. The sniper. Um, this is probably the this is probably the worst description because that's carrying the implication that the pink is always supposed to be using a a a, a ranged weapon. And but, even in the description that they give, they talk about them being ranged combat experts more than anything else. Points to Decca Blue being the sniper of the Decca Rangers, but that's nothing. Um, but, no, the, the sniper. It's outright the sniper. Um, I'd like to call an audible and go with Marksman instead. Okay. That works too. Now, red is an easy one. Strong fighting spirit that leads from the front of any conflict. He is the leader. That's really all you can call it. He is the leader. The leader, or if we if we want to give it a little bit more of a militaristic taste, you could call him uh, the sergeant. I would, I'd or, probably I, say the captain. I was honestly going to go with the soldier. That works, too. Yeah. So long well, as it's not Ryu actually, soldier. No, I got to disagree, because the soldier implies that they're not a leader type. The soldier is just... Someone who follows orders. I'd say if you're going to go with a military type thing, go with the captain. That works a bit better. Mm-hmm. Um. And then, uh, as for yellow, fast and nimble, the this warrior is good at exploiting an enemy's weakness. The skirmisher. Fast, nimble, hits from weak points. That's That describes everything about someone who skirmishes. And then, because it is included, even though it's in the advanced spectrum, um, the description for the White Ranger so says a unique weapon and an advanced connection. Honestly, honestly, as a as a um, ca- as a because I think I think it's I think it's that I think we can use that as a catch-all for for those individual rangers who have. So we have, we have some sort of advanced setup that did that, or some sort of different setup. Whether it be, whether it be the whether it be the um, extreme melee focus that say Utsut Semimaru had in in Kyoto Uger, 
or the or the or the go or the go on wings. They're, just the key is that they're that this is the representation of our extra character archetype. And, so would we call would we call this one the X factor? Um, I I am on, I am on, I'm honest I'm honestly. I was thinking I was thinking of the master but that but that doesn't that doesn't quite fit. Um No. This is where we could use the expert rather than the technician from earlier. Yeah. Well, the technician is specifically specifically tailored towards technology <laughs> yeah, and that's... brains whereas this is the ex, you know calling this the expert an expert at a very specific field. Yeah. So then the specialist yeah. Hey, there you go. That's the better. specialist. This the specialist. So we've we've got our our seven descriptors. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we could add more on to that. Like this is just based on what they're already giving us. This is what we could come up with. But you could add a whole bunch of other different archetypes to it. And, and some archetypes are sub are subtypes of archetypes. Such as uh, if we go with uh, back to uh, Kyoryuger and look at. Kyoryu Purple One, he's the mad scientist, which would be like a subtype of the technician. I'm disappointed that it doesn't drink enough Dr. Pepper, though. <laughs> mm, Duke <laughs> P. <laughs> El Sai Kongru. Kongru. <laughs> and, and then, so if we're going to go, you know, going off that Kyoryu Vi uh, Violet uh, thing, have Kyoryu Violet 2 be the apprentice. Yeah. But the. In in fact, it's kind of it's kind of funny that when I when I looked at the staff, a lot of the, a lot of the people had a fi had a five E background. I'm kind of surprised they didn't consider putting subclasses in this thing. Maybe they just didn't have enough time. Um, enough time or enough brains? Because even when I looked at their their background, the best that I could find is people working on five E modules or or working on modules for twentieth anniversary World of Darkness books. Monk, I will be right back. By the way, all right. Okay, Monk. When you said not enough brains, I was about to say no brains. That's a tautology for people who work on five E. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we rag and joke, but some some there's a little bit of truth in there. Now the whole th the whole thing of essence adjustments. I don't think I don't think we'd have to change too much about those, especially since we don't have the color problem. The yeah, and they fit. Yeah. The power capacity growth, though, that's that is one thing that I have a bit of an issue with. I have an issue with it because, except for when in Power Rangers, they'd get uh, the Red Ranger would get a mid-season solo upgrade, mm -hmm. and we've talked about that before on other episodes of Geek Watch and how we don't really like that. Um. The the power of the of the team tends to grow as a whole. Like, I I don't see a reason why their power capacity all grows at different rates. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, especially especially since the power capacity is utilized for grid powers, and as as I pointed out in the review when that goes live, um. It's basically key powers from 5e and all but name. They turned every one of them into a bad monk. <laughs> if monk, or monk or war, monk or warlock. Um, glad, welcome back, welcome back, Shades. We're covering the nonsense of the varying growth rates for power capacity. Mm. And how? And how? Honestly, honestly, that doesn't make it doesn't make sense, especially mm -hmm. especially given how teams develop. Yeah, that that makes you know again everything's on the individual, but honestly, you need to have some kind of a team growth. And because of because of that, for um, power capacity, instead of it, the the approach that the approach that I'm considering is that much like how do you remember how Jan, do you remember how Exalted had two different types of essence? Yeah, um, personal and peripheral. The difference is. You only get a little bit of personal, but but you could you but you could use charms without without um flaring up your anima banner. Yeah. 
Whereas with peripheral, you got a lot more, but the more that you, but the more that you used, the more that your anima banner would flare, and it's basically a key aura. And the more yeah. the more of it you're using, the more blatantly obvious it is that you're an that you're an exalt. Yeah, exposing you're an exalt in the lands of exalted, especially if you're something like the uh, always hated solar exalts. Um, bad idea. The dragon blooded exalts like to hunt down solar exalts. Uh, don't do that. Do uh, not. Do not. Now, of course, if you're someplace in the north, nobody cares. This is true. But then flaring up your, your anima banner can attract other problems as well. Mm -hmm. So are you thinking of doing the same thing, having a, a, a small personal pool of, of power points that everybody grows the same and then the peripheral is different, or vice versa? What I'm thinking of, what I'm thinking of doing is is there is a personal pool and a team pool. That makes sense. Uh, the the idea being is that the is that the personal the personal pool is is one that you have access to but it's but it is significantly smaller. The um the team pool is is one that is one that is significantly larger. But you can only access it when when you ha when um when you have pe when you have people taking combined actions. You okay, know, actually, which is a good actually putting in teamwork into 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 this show into this game based on a show that talks all about teamwork. So it's it's the Chroma Squad combining your actions thing all over again. Got it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chroma Squad did it right, so why not? Chroma Squad is such a good game. It is. It really is. But uh, I um I can see with that. Now the real question is, do we still want differing growth somewhere, or are they all going to grow the same? I am think I am more in the favor of all of all growing at of all growing at the same rate, because mm. there, because the only the only way I could possibly go with this idea of 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 um growth growth at growth at its own um in, of growth at different rates is if there's something balancing them out, like say. The reason, the reason why, say, I'll, actually, let me use Heavens and Heresies as an example. Consider the fact that of the casting classes, the wizard has the smallest pool of spells that he knows. <laughs> well, not the smallest, but they have a very limited um, pool of spells. Um. But, with, but they, can, but they're the only ones who can utilize scrolls. I, I don't think you got that right, Monk. No, they no, know. I screwed that. I screwed that up. And Tanner, I apologize in advance. I think a better. I think a better example would be the Druid. Then, the Druid has a low amount of spell points, but does a lot of stuff with the freebies that it gets. Yes. Yeah. Um. So, so you would only if there were a, a trade-off. Yeah, I get that. And, and when when I look this at, game, when I look at the features that you get. There isn't that trade-off that would justify it. Yeah, so it's better that everybody just has the same growth, mm -hmm. and you have two different power pools. And I would say, I'd say, I'd say, given, I'd say, given that, um, as far as as far as the as far as the personal power capacity, I am th I am thinking of having both. Um, go up as you level up in fact in fact instead of instead of individual levels i'm honestly thinking of doing team levels which makes more sense because the whole idea is that you're going to be working more and more as a team as time goes on yeah at the beginning you're not exactly all going to mesh ver very well especially if you have very differing personalities and backstories but as time goes on you're all going to be hanging out together working together you're going to start growing together mm -hmm. and uh with that in mind um I'm looking at the personal power capacity for people who are going fast. Mm -hmm. um, if we if we use that as the team power capacity, that's every every three team levels, the personal power capacity goes up by two. But if you just want it to go up by one every team level, that could also work. I am th what I'm thinking of is using the is here. I'm th the approach that I'm thinking is this. The it start it starts with your with your highest essence for for um personal power. Okay. 
so it's I know it'd be t I know it'd be tempting to ha to draw up, to draw upon strength or speed or even smarts for it, but I think utilizing the highest essence is the best way to go about this. Mm -hmm. And in the in that and within that within that same um within that same vein, let me see. Let me make sh let me make sure I've got. I'd say hi I'd say highest I'd say personal capacity is highest essence plus. I th I think I think plus one for I think plus one for every two levels. Or just or just or just highest essence plus half level, is a, it would be the best approach. Mm -hmm. Uh and as far as as far as t as far as team power capacity, I I am think I am thinking that that would be. I'd say I would I'd say I'd say that would I say that we could do um. Plus two, I um plus um two at two at the start, plus two more every three levels. Okay. Actually, actually, inst Which... instead of instead of two, I'm thinking of going with um six. Is so the idea, six. The idea is that your team power capacity is going to always eclipse your personal. Yeah. So six at the beginning, and then two every three levels. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're thinking? Okay, yeah. I can see that. Uh, and the, again, the key thing is is, the, is that you can only utilize team power when you're u when you're utilizing po powers in in some sort of in some sort of synergy action. This is this yeah. is to do two things. It, one, it's to make it so that any every individual um, grid power that you may pick ref, um, is is a, is able to be utilized by the whole team in some fashion. And two, mm -hmm. it's a means to allow people to get creative with their action pool. You know, this is a game that's all about that. This is this is a series that has a lot of impressive that has had a lot of impressive stunt work in one form or another for years. The Kalish the Kalish era a little bit down because of brute because of Kalish explosions, but I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> and Kalish explosions were probably less annoying than some of the other problems we ran into yeah. during that. And to be fa and to be fair, um, Toei has done worse with Kalish explosions. Now, the one ex the one exception that I'm that I'm considering putting in with this is that the specialist gets a lot more personal power, but they don't get access to use um, team power capacity because they're the specialist. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm think I'm thinking for them. They, they, it's essence times two. Essence times two is just is the starting point, and it yeah. goes up. Okay. Is the idea the idea is when it comes to what they're specialized in, they are extremely powerful. But the but they're uh, but they don't have, but because of how different their kit is. It's harder for them to do to utilize that same team pool. Yeah, and I mean that that was pretty evident with Tommy as a White Ranger and other such Sixth Rangers that were specialists. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, they can help other people with theirs, but they themselves really don't take advantage of it themselves. Yeah, yeah. Like if they were to, if they, I think. In that case, the specialist monk, if they do assist with a, a team combined power check, all they assist with is the roll, none of the points. Yeah, that's what that's why I said they can they cannot use team power capacity. Yeah. Um. So like the, maybe maybe they'll give a, a if we're still oh, using the shift. Mm -hmm. If we were still using the shift system, it, they would have described it as an upshift. Yeah. Um, um what was but that, bonus dice. Yeah, what was that, JT? Oh, uh, oh, sorry, I was thinking out loud. Uh, sorry. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um. It happens. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as as far as the 
Now, give, given given the, given that, um, things like the training and the starting skill ranks, I don't think we'd have to change too much about that, or th or the way or the way personal power works. Um, with the gr with the grid equipment, um, that's gonna get that we're gonna have to change, and it's and I think I think it's going to I think it's I think. We're going to have to blow up that particular approach because the way it ends up working, once again, it leans way too much towards the um, MMPR era. Okay. Um, but I do think we should keep. I do. Th I think a lot of teams keep keep a bit of a theme of a team weapon and a personal weapon. Yeah. The the and in some cases, some cases I I use. Uh, the team weapon is a combination of the personal weapons. Hi, uh, hi, MMPR and Zio. But um, <clears throat> then you have things like uh, Gokaiger, where it's a giant chip. I'm I'm not referring to that kind of team weapon, but more of a unique indiv a um. Oh, you mean like the like the blasters, uh, the blasters that changed into daggers, whose names I keep forgetting all the time. Yeah, the bl the blade blaster, the basically a basically a sidearm weapon and a primary. Yeah. Um. But when it comes to when it comes to the ro when it comes to rolls them rolls themselves, um. Zord feature, I th I think that I think that's there's two things that I'm considering. One, um, instead instead of instead of the pick one s setup that some of them have, like say grid tech for blue, you have a se you have a series of um, you have bas you have basically a list a la a la the way you level up in Powered by the Apocalypse. Mm hmm. And you and you you just you just pick you just pick and choose a la carte at appropriate levels. Okay. Because I think I think with that one you can have more personalization. Um, when not, obviously some of them might be might be on a chain if ne if need be, but there's no but there's no reason t there's no reason for for say the grid tech series. To have people p have people pick between, uh, bet between um, between two between two at each tier. I mean, granted, it's better than picking one at each tier, which is the tempting approach to do it. But at the same time, I think I think that having I think that having it a bit more freeform, um, would work better for us. Oh, now, but as far as the personal power mechanic, I don't think we'd have to change that much. Mm-hmm. If anything at all. Um, as far as far as the, and that then when it comes to things like general perks, um, grid, um, grid powers, infu infusion, bur burst, extra attack, and prime, that kind of thing we wouldn't have to change too much on. Well, I would. Um... I would argue that <clears throat> that uh, the Ranger Prime stuff mm -hmm. is a little. It doesn't feel like a capstone. Yeah, it. it ver I think. I think that'd be something to work with to provide some sort of capstone because really, really, what it is, what it really is, if I'm being honest, is numbers go up. Yeah. It's. It, yeah. Like with, with uh, with most of them, it's plus two to some defenses or all defenses, um, an additional off offensive thing, and then edge on a specific skill check, mm -hmm. which I'm yeah. guessing ed edge is their form of like the advantage system in this. Yes. Yeah. Um, what's really funny is, like. I'm looking at it. Black Ranger gets plus two on all defenses. Blue Ranger gets plus two. Green Ranger gets plus two. Pink Ranger gets plus two. Red Ranger doesn't. Red Ranger gets resistant to normal blunt and sharp damage. And why? Why is there even? Why there's? Why is there even damage classifications in this game, anyways? 
Yeah. <laughs> Blunt damage, sharp damage, energy damage. It all hits a ranger the same. They all explode in sparks. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I would also say some of the extra perks that you get are, again, you're seeing stuff based on the color, or based on the MMPR colors. And I think some, while there are going to be some commonalities but different archetypes, I think some of that stuff... I think this is the one time where you could say the colors do make a difference, especially with red. Like, red's one of red's perks is let's bring them together. Where, you know, basically, starting at level 5, you can start combining your weapons. And that... But that that's a... Uh, that's also something the leader does. So the captain could just as easily do the same. Yeah, but not every not every red's gonna fit the captain. Remember, we're I, had a, gonna have different archetypes. Yes, but what we're talking about now is we've we've already thrown out colors. Ranger, this is this is the captain prime now. This everything on the red ranger page is basically the captain, or at least it's what the captain would look like because that's what we've decided what the captain the the captain archetype fits into. Mm-hmm. Fair enough, fair enough, but I'm also I'm also thinking beyond that because we're gonna have other archetypes that might fit that color as well. Yeah, this is where I was suggesting if we are gonna have to have the colors be a specific thing, have sub have the archetypes match those colors. Like there's other types of reds besides the captain, so let's have other you know have some commonalities in terms of perks, but have them be different enough so that it stands out. Yeah. Um. But when it comes to how this thing handles Zords and the idea of Zord features, I honestly think Zord creations should be separated from individual Ranger creation. Absolutely. Even though it leads to a slightly larger character sheet, uh, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing at all. This is, um, if I had to use a prime example for how this should be developed, it's the difference between Pilot and Mech in Mech and Zeta. Yes. Bear in mind that, of course, whatever Zords you come up with, it's going to have to be of a similar motif so that they can combine together and it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it, obviously you'll you'll um, you'll communicate that to your. At that point, you're now talking about GM management. Mm-hmm. Um, your your GM will have to, you know, like like Monk does, make a maybe they'll make a primer and hey, these are the motifs and such you'll be working with. Try and design your mech to fit within this. But, I mean, remember that the Shogun Zords were individual fighters as well as a full-on Gestalt combiner. Yeah. The only season that ever had such... Well, I'm also talking in terms of motif, mm-hmm. you know, and how those power, how your powers would base on the motif. The only season that ever had such a mishmash of motifs that kind of somehow combined was Ninja Steel. You mean the Ninja? <laughs> I was trying to give it a better name, goddammit! Let me have this! <laughs> okay, do not get me wrong. We all hate Ninja. But when your when your foundational when your foundational uh source material is shit, you can only make shittier shit? Yeah. Um And yet I no, actually I would say that Ninja Steel, while not great, was still slightly better. <laughs> Not by much, I'll grant you, but still better. Low bar? Low bar. The fully admit low bar, but it still managed to cross it. Just barely. Yeah. Now, the difference between the core of the earth and the mantle of the earth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> They're now, both still dying. Moving moving past that, I want when it comes to the artist when it comes to the um influences. Mm-hmm. This kind of thing, I don't think I really don't think we'd have to change too much because all that it is is just a slightly different version of Five E's backgrounds. Yeah. Um, is it as non uh, non contributory as Five E's backgrounds? Um, not in not in not entirely because a each one gives you an influence perk. And a a hang up as well as as well as a uh, as well as a background bond that that you can roll. And the background bond is kind of similar to some of to some of the random um, background rolls that you could make for um, well backgrounds in Five E. But the okay. fact that it has the fact that each of them gets a 
perk does does make it does um does make does uh, does make it a step above the backgrounds in 5e where there was a perk but the prop but the problem was the it it was largely gm fiat like like say the like say the soldier mhm mm oh now i'm i'm i do need to point out some stuff um i'm looking at these at these influences mm -hmm. um most of the influences describe your perk and your hang up and they and they describe your hang up and why you have that hang up both and what it does mechanically. Mm -hmm. So it gives you both the narrative and mechanical hook. But it's inconsistent. We're seeing that inconsistency again. Um, for example, I was looking at... Uh, where is it? The hang-up on the Nomad. You don't often op open up to others because you have learned through the, um, uh, through the impermanence of your life that it is a waste of time. It takes a while for you to trust new people, and you don't believe any stranger on your first encounter with them. Mechanically, you do not believe any stranger on your first encounter with them. That's that's the, that's nothing. That's not a, that's not a mechanic. That's just you don't do a thing. If I'm being honest, I th when it comes to influences, I think this is the rule that it should be: an influence perk grants an edge on a grants an edge on on one on one or two um, types of skill uses. Okay. Whereas. A hang up should grant you should grant an edge when certain when certain skills are used against you. Okay. So if someone uses a type of skill against you, they get the edge. Yeah. The, the only other thing, the only other approach that I could think of is the typical approach of if you do uh, if you do a certain action that's disadvant disadvantageous to you. Um, mm. You get you gaining you gaining a hero point, but honestly, I'd rather leave that kind of thing up to the GM. Yeah. Uh, so. So. Yeah. So I, I would I would so I I would I could take that influence perk gives you an edge on a te on a test uh, a skill test of some sort when you use it, and hang up uh, gives your opponent an edge when they use a specific uh, perk against or specific skill against you. I can I can definitely mesh with that. I am taking I am taking notes through all this. I sh I should know, I should keep, bear that in mind. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to uh to homogenize the influences at least mechanically. And I, I know um, I know it sounds like we're making all the influences the same, but the key thing is is. Is grant is granting a degree of consistency and making it so that, um, you have you that people can have at a glance some idea of what of what each one will do. Yeah. Because things like um, because w going back to that inconsistency thing, things like um, community helper, where it makes you heal people other than yourself, no matter what. Yeah, that that strikes that. Um, cuts a little bit too close to the lawful stupid problem. Of, yeah, or of the force behavior. Or I just went down to Survivor and I looked at the influence perk here. It's it's uh so specific. Um, when faced with an emergency situation or instinctual choice, gain an edge on a survival or other related check to know how to best navigate the situation. Mm -hmm. Additionally, at any point where your smarts will would be lowered to zero, roll a willpower check of ten or above to keep it at one. That's just so. It's so specific. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the hang-up is uh, while in the presence of the reminder of your survival experience. You are unable to focus on anything else and suffer a snag on all alertness checks. Yeah, that's a br that's a bridge to that's a bridge to that's a bridge way 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 too far. Yeah. It's a it it's just making it so that there's some skill or essence you get, check you get edge on. And some skill or essence check that people have edge on against you, 
makes sense. There are a lot of skills and a lot of essences and a lot of combinations that you could go through to make each one unique to each influence. It's not hard. Um, and of course, the influences also have the suggested characteristics and that's like your your style of whatever influence you're taking mm -hmm. and your bonds. So it, it does have a bunch of unique things narratively as well. Um, it's just the mechanics are so wildly varying. Yeah. Now, what, now when it comes to the background bond, that thing, I don't think we'd need to change at all. Yeah, it can stay because it's just it's it's flavor. Mm -hmm. Same with it helps you narratively. Yeah, um, it is one of those things that if I was GMing this, I would, um, I would if I would spend a lot of time in the session zero asking people about these kind of things. Yeah, it's it's not um, it's not a massive uh, issue to keep those. It's just that the 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 perks and the uh, hangups need to be consistent. Yeah. Now, then we get to essence scores and skills, and I think we. I th I, now the four, the four essences. I think we can still keep that. I'd actually I'd actually prefer keeping that. Yeah, simple but effective. Mm -hmm. They are, after all, a special signature to save a soul. Yeah. <laughs> there are four S's there. I get to make that joke. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, but in terms of in ter now in, in terms of the skill list. The oh, there are there are two that I th there are two that I think we need to get rid of, as for, in so far as skills. Okay. Conditioning and initiative. Okay. Um, I mean initiative obviously because well it, initiative as a skill is stupid. Yeah. We've been um, over that. Conditioning determines the to, is base, basically says how much. Additional physical harm or damage the creature can suffer before becoming defeated. Basically, you're basically you're spending skill points to give yourself more health. The it's just plus numbers and doesn't really do anything else. Yeah, and the 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 other problem is there's no, there's not a whole lot of places where you could use that as a skill. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think I think condition I think conditioning and. Um. And initiative need to be derived traits. We, um, like initiative's easy to derive. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be. It's gonna come from maybe speed and smarts. Um, because your awareness plus your ability to react, speed and smarts. How 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 do we want to derive it from those? We can discuss that minutiae if we need to as for conditioning um strength and speed your physical ability to lift and move and etc so speed's going to be unfortunately an overlap but with only four essences that's really all we can do yeah if i'm be if i'm being honest the there's two. There's a couple approaches we could do. We could do the average, the average of the two essences. You know, add them together, divide that by half. Mm -hmm. um, or we, or we could use the, or we could use the higher of the two, and that counts as your initiative and your conditioning. I think higher of the two works better. I, I know it sounds a little biased because Heavens and Heresies does the whole higher of the two thing when you have to choose between core abilities for defenses. Um. But I think it sounds a little better because uh, that way someone can, for example, if they're choosing a character who's more of the the lightning bruiser, so they get the strength and the speed from their role, mm -hmm. um, they can default to strength for conditioning and speed for initiative. But if somebody's maybe got, taken the technician and gets all them smarts, they can default to speed for conditioning and smarts for initiative allows for them to play to their strengths. Yeah. I do th I do think that regardless this should go up 
by one every four levels. And um, one or two I, I don't know. Levels. Yeah, but I think um, if you if you look at the the way that the level ups were charted out in the roles section, mm -hmm. they had assigned essence bonus increases. Um, each each for for each essence, in fact, per level almost. Yeah, in that case, I think we can just use the the initiative conditioning we've set up as our basis, and that's going to change yeah. based on. Um, but based on bonus essence, based on um, essence modifiers that you're going to get multiple um, versions of. Yeah. And I, I think that would work uh, really well, actually. Um, and so, you know, you, you have your three, your, your three... Uh, you know, it, it's clear that this is too physical, too mental. Mm -hmm. Um... And you you know you have those those two physical and one mental that are uh, sure deriving your conditioning initiative from and people are like well then what happens to social well social is going to be more useful in non combat situations um, in most cases except when you're for example cheering your team on trying to get them rallied up whatever you might be doing um, and as such social doesn't really go into initiative or conditioning no. The only way you could do it is if there was so is if there were social encounters, and I don't see that happening. Yeah, this isn't L five R. And yes, I know we keep going back to L five R when we mention when we mention social combat, but uh, the reason we keep going back is because it's done so fucking well. Also, <laughs> what also do you also do you expect to do a also good luck good fucking luck trying to do a social in, trying to do a social combat system in D and D. <laughs> Furthermore, good luck trying to do social combat in a Power Rangers RPG. Yeah. Now, what are you going to do? Talk the villain to death? Yeah, and, you you kind of caught there. You want to you know what's you want to know what's really funny? That that only worked one place. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it, unfortunately, time, it wasn't official. Yeah, if I, if I was if I was writing the, if I was writing this um. I prob I probably would have put a a um a side j just titled Plan Xander. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if, and if you think and if you think that's out of line, keep in mind that earlier in the book they even bring up the "too much pink energy is dangerous" meme. Oh, what? <laughs> I I didn't even notice that. I oh, did. God. I was uh, I was skimming monk but uh it's, no it's in the it's on page 31 under under um balance within the spectrum Oh Jesus um well my reference was uh was uh, Akiba Ranger Hikonin Sentai Akiba Ranger mm -hmm. the one time that you could talk a villain to death <laughs> Now this uh, God I love that show I love that oh, show yeah. so damn much. No, we are. Now the whole the whole idea that your essence points determines the determines um the skill the um I think I think when it comes to the way that they have it is that essence determines skill points that you can distribute with the skills that are linked to that essence. I am I am thinking that in, instead of instead of that, it determines the amount of of skills and specializations okay that you, that you can that you can have and beca because because uh, because of this and one one might say that that that, that means you're going to have more skill points than you have actually skills but i would argue that at higher levels you're going to be spending more and more on specializations oh yeah that's ki that's kind of what i'm going with cuz if you if you look at um if you look at a lot it not just with um not just with rangers or sentai members but just super just supers in general they the, it is it they typically have a wide range of skills this is this was also the reason why when I tried statting Conan a long time ago um just going through his skills and even even in say Conan D20 is a fucking nightmare because of all the things that we see Conan do in both the books, um, 
the fi the films, although the films is um the films don't aren't really the proper Conan in my opinion. And and more importantly in all of the comics, whether it be the whether it be the Marvel era, the Dynamite era or the Dark Horse era. I mean there's a it's also I mean we see we obviously see him as he's a he's been a barbarian, he's been a thief, he's been a pi he's been a pirate, he's been a king. So that's a that's a whole lot of different skills that you have to uh, that you have to uh, account. He's for. been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn, and a king. <laughs> <laughs> but because because of that, um, if I was if I was writing this wholesale, I would write I would write in more um, specializations. Almost almost at the same level of the specializations we saw in L five R third and fourth edition. Fifth edition is, of course, a, a whole different beast that we'll tackle one of these days. But today is not that day. And because the because the idea the idea with it is that the idea with this kind of approach is that skip is that um with the way they did it, you're gonna want to dump into into several into several skills and specialize in them. We're aiming for more generalists. You no know, people who not that they're jack of all trades but they're ja but they are capable in a lot of different things of of course that's only that's only assuming that the dice gods favor them yeah uh but with with the with the um sl with the sliding dice setup that they have I'm thinking of just ha of just I'm thinking of like we said earlier just having that as um adding or subtracting dice and the whole th the whole thing of if you slide too much of being an auto fail or a fumble, I don't see a reason to do that, because um, the less di the less dice you have, the more screwed you're going to be, anyways. Yeah. And the their particular edge and snag is basically basically advantage and disadvantage. Yeah. Which. As much as I'm not a fan of this approach because I do find it a bit swingy, um, I don't really see the the only t the only time. Actually, you know, actually, you know what? This is one of those things we have to change because of the because of the die pool that we have here. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of ways that this could be done. One of the obvious one is doubling the dice, which I'm not fond of because that's going to be way too many dice, and we're not Shadowrun. <laughs> I mean, not even Shadowrun is Shadowrun. <laughs> um, I'm, th I'm thinking, I'm thinking instead of ha of having it that if you ha if you have an edge, you have exploding dice. If you have a snag, you have imploding dice. And you're g you're gonna want to explain for anyone who isn't a. Who isn't aware of what imploding dice are, Monk? Um, I I should, probably should explain both. Exploding dice is basically if you if if you roll if you roll the max result on a single die, you roll another you roll another die and add the result, and this is cumulative. If you keep basically if you're rolling d10s and you roll a ten, mm -hmm. you roll another d10, and if that rolls a ten, you roll another d10. Yeah. Shades when we pl when we played L five R that um that rule was in there with the roll and keeps. I remember I, I remember when we did that. Yeah, I was like, oh, that sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, imploding dice is the exact is the exact opposite. If, in our case, if you roll a one, you roll another die and you subtract that from your result. And what and what and um because of the f because of the fact that it would s it would kind of skew things to have it to have one side be cumulative and the other side um harder harder to be cumulative because in order for that cumulative thing to happen you'd have to keep rolling ones which isn't that much of a penalty or um, you'd, or, or you'd have to have it that a imploding die um cum is cumulative if it ro if it rolls an 8 which is going to be too confusing i'm thinking of dropping the cumulative part um oh, i was actually thinking that instead monk an imploding die 
if you get a one, you remove another die you've rolled from the from the ultimate um, result. It's like antimatter; it cancels out another die. If we do, if we do that, how how would we handle edges? Would it just would it just add another die? Um. Yeah, I think I think that's better. That way, you don't get the cumulative explosion. You, it explodes once, but it doesn't com keep exploding. Kind of contrary to Power Rangers, but whatever. Everything explodes multiple times in Power Rangers. <laughs> Six or seven camera angles? Yeah, let's go. How many times are we going to explode this? Are we going to film the same explosion? Three oh. or four times until the sl Yes! The answer is yes. How many times is that, sir? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that way, you know, it, you roll you roll your... Let's say you're rolling 4d10. Mm -hmm. You roll your 4d10 for uh, Brawl. You're rolling your strength, your, your strength pool right now. Mm -hmm. And you get uh, 2d10. You roll... Un you get two 10s on those d10. So then you roll another 2d10... And even if those get tense, it's done. It doesn't explode past the first. Whereas if you roll the 4d10 and you get one die that's a 1, it eats another die. And those two die are, are out of the consideration entirely. That, that way, it doesn't swing too much and you can't get the, um, the problem that some exploding dice have in some systems where uh, at the end you've exploded so many dice that... Um, it doesn't matter what the result was. It, whatever you just hit is dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I No, you laugh. I have seen exploding D6s go to the point where somebody is rolling over 100 D6. Over 100 D6 shades. God damn. And that's on top of what they've already rolled. Mm -hmm. It gets fucking ridiculous yeah so so limiting it at a single explosion or a single implosion that makes it so that oh you had a a uh, you had a an edge hey you get some extra you get you get some extra to add there you get your oomph but you know if you have a snag maybe harder to hit that that uh that ultimate um result you need might need to have somebody come in and help you. Might need to throw in some personal power. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah. Now, as I mentioned, story points are the game's extra effort system, mm -hmm. and I think that's I think that is something that can be kept, especially especially since the the effects with extra effort systems are always powerful, but it's balanced out by the fact that you're not going to be getting them all that easy. And or if you do get them easier, such as in our system, um, it's still fairly balanced. Well, our our ex our extra effort die that we have in our that that we have in our project doesn't really count for the typical approach. I'm I'm go I'm um when I mention extra efforts um pool, I'm referring to things like edge will in shadow run and will yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, edge points, points, fate points. Yeah, um, void points in L5R. Yep. The and, things that that really affect the outcome of anything. Yeah. Um, and of course, plot points in Cortex. <laughs> now, with that with that in mind, with st the with the means that you get um, story points, I'm th I'm thinking of keeping most of those because what we have is. Um, fumbles, fumbles add story points. I, th and I, th I think that's something that can be kept. Yeah, it's a good way for fail forward. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. certain, certain, ce certain scenes, as a GM fiat, that should go. Um, that should go in. Um, ideas that that result in moving the plot forward should add one. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. That's a that's a GM call kind of thing. As well as good role playing, obviously. That's. That's certainly one that can do as well as the whole thing of, I, th 
instead of instead of playing up a PC's flaws, I think I think one rule that we could put in is anytime your hang up apl ends up applying, you get um the party gets a story point. Yeah. And, and that way, no matter what, if the hang up applies, whether you manage to fend it off or it actually causes you difficulty, you do get something out of it. Yeah. Um Cortex Cortex Plus during the Marvel Heroic Days, had that kind of thing with distinctions. You could either roll it as a D8, or you could roll it as a D4 and gain a plot point. Um, the re the reason the reason why that can why that can be an issue why um rolling a low die is can be an issue is anytime you roll a one on di on die in the in Marvel Heroic, that die type gets added to the GM's Doom Pool. Which is his pool to make things interesting. Mm -hmm. But so I put in hangups generate SP. Um, and now the GM ha the the GM has the has their own means of do of doing so, which I'm I'm perfectly I'm perfectly fine with, except for the. At the beginning of each major scene, add one d two plus one story points. I don't see the I don't see the point of that. Mm -hmm. Especially for the especially for the GM. Um, but the approach that I'm the approach that I'm going with is, the party has a shared pool of, of story points, and all the NPCs and encount and encounters on the GM side have a shared pool. Now. As far as, as far as the uses, I'm trying to think if there's any, if there's any that we need that we need to um, adjust, and I don't think there. I don't. The only one that I the only one that I th that I think we'd have to get rid of is the grid power bloom, simply because it doesn't fit our scheme anymore. Because it says. The the team can spend one story point per team member to cause a grid power bloom, granting one d two personal power t for each team member. But since yeah. we're making the story points party centric, that there's no place for that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's um. That's not really necessary at that point. Well, at least as written, the idea the idea of using story the idea of using story points. To gr to grant personal power, I'm perfectly fine with. I just I just have it that instead, you instead you spend you spend at the cost of one, at the cost of one at the cost of a story point, um each one get the the um the group gets one point of person for uh, personal power. Mm -hmm. And you you can do it up to up to the total amount of rangers in a team. So if you if you want to if you want to go the Q Ranger style team, well there well there's well you've got a big advantage that's gonna be costly. <laughs> yeah. You could even say that's not very lucky. Yeah. Hey no, that's a good reference because it means lucky's not there. Aha Alright, fine, I'll give you this one. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. Um now gen general per general perks and grid powers in my, in my in in my op in my opinion um these are feats in all but name. They are. General perks are feats. I think there's some that are, that are very close to to um to feet to feats from to feats from 5E. There's also some that are just plus numbers, and I don't like it. Yeah, but so, but some of the but some of the feats that are a, that are a bit too specific for me, I'm perfectly willing of, of getting rid of, um, an exam or at least reflavoring. An example of this is ninja power. Ninja power. Oh no. Ninja power. You've tapped into the eternal spiritual powers of Ninjor, granting you the following benefits. You can spend one power in conjunction with your <laughs> It's Morphin Time Spectrum class feature to activate your Ninja power. While morphed with Ninja power, the following is true. Plus one damage to martial arts attacks, edge and all speed-based skills, 
Choose an element to damage your martial arts attacks and flicks. You may, as a free action, jump up to 20... F what? Whoa! What? 20 feet in any direction. This jump does that not modify your movement for the round, nor is it modified by using other perks or game effects. Any attacks targeting you this turn after this jump suffer, shi suffer downshift 1. M Monk, it says a free action. Yes. You can do this endlessly. It doesn't have a limit. It doesn't say there's a limit. Yeah. It's a free action with no... You have to wait until your next turn to use it again. It is, I can jump 20 feet endlessly to get right up to whatever I want to fuck up and fuck it up. Um. Yeah, ninja power can be scrapped because it is very specific to ninja or, but also for that. For that fucking alone. Fuck that. What's balance? Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna, just going to pick ninja power. We're going to be the Mighty Morphin Ninja Rangers. You want... Although I, I will admit that there is there is one... Um, there is one... Per, there is one... Um, there is one idea for a gen for a general perk that I I don't know if I I, I don't know if I'd have an, have any have its effects yet, but I just want to put it in just to be a cheeky bastard. What's that? Metallic armor. <laughs> <sighs> Actually, I think that would go into the second half of that category. For uh, grid the towers. grid towers. Yeah. And. Oh, speak, oh, speaking of speaking of which, there's boost in, there's boost initiative, but um, grit with with grid power. Let me let me let me do a bit of let me do a bit of checking when it comes to grit when it comes to um grid powers with the things. So, yeah, okay, we we um, you know how I you know how I said these are key powers while sh while shades was AFK. Yes. Um. We've got one other. We've got one other problem. Oh no! You're only getting three. <laughs> you get uh, one at sixth uh, level, then one at eleventh, and one at sixteenth. Also, two of those grid powers: hardened armor and illuminate. That is the fucking metallic armor. <laughs> you put those two together, you got the fucking metallic armor. Tell me I'm wrong. Um, I can't. I cannot do that. Now, <laughs> in in my, the idea with the idea with these is that you spend variable amounts of um of power in order to utilize them. If I'm if I'm being honest, I am I am very strongly considering taking the taking taking the um saga edition approach to this kind of thing. The idea being. In, with a lot of the classes in Star Wars Saga Edition, which is a very, which is one of my, which is one of my favorite um, takes on takes on um, Star Wars and tabletop classes. Every cl every class go the every base class goes through a very similar pattern. At every level, you're either getting a a um fe a feature a um a feature from one of the from one of the trees. Yeah. It basically a talent is, is what it was called or you're getting a feat and this alternates every every level and I'm honestly thinking of taking of taking that approach with um, general perks and grid powers because I don't I don't see why not I honestly do not see why not now I'm pretty sure some would argue that that's gonna, that's gonna mean that people at high levels are gonna have an ass load of um of of powers that they that they can that they can use both per, both personal and t and team and teams resources with monk can can I say it I'd like to say it go ahead your power rangers that's the fucking point <laughs> <laughs> you, they they call the capstone ability which we're going to probably change in the minutia if we ever get into the minutia Ranger Prime skills. If you're a Ranger Prime, if you're at 20th level, if your team's at 20th level, since we're going team levels, 
You're going to have a buttload of powers. You've fought together for so long, learned each other's. You're the, you're the most tight-knit team there is. You've gotten all the extra bits and bobs and the team power-ups. You're going to have a bunch of fucking powers. You're going to be very power. You could even say that the powerful ranges. I cannot believe you just made that reference. <laughs> You think they catch that, you son of a bitch? <laughs> it had to be made. No. <laughs> no, no, it didn't uh... have to be made. You just really, really wanted to. Now, um... Love you too, Shades. <laughs> it, now, that brings the question of, of what should come first, perk or grid power, if we're, go if we're, going, if we're going alternating over, over 20 levels. So at the at their level one at the their level one they get the ability to morph and that in and of itself could be seen as a grid power. Mm -hmm. But I'd actually want to start with a grid power. So start because with, start with a grid power at first level and then general perk at second level. Yeah, because morphing is something every ranger can do, and they get something on top of that at the very beginning usually. So. I think it should be a grid power. What about you, Shades? I don't see any argument there. <laughs> JT, any objections? Mm, no, I don't think so. Sounds good to me. Three for three. I'm happy for that. Um, hooray for democracy. <laughs> Monk, yeah, I, know, I know you. If you had any, uh, if you had any uh, issues, you'd just be like, "Nah, call an audible. We're gonna do this." <laughs> well, it is, it is a constitutional monarchy. <laughs> uh, when did a monastery become a monarchy? I mean, the 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 the, uh, the words are pretty close. I guess I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, I was tempted to go with, this is not a democracy, this is the United States of Mildred the Monk. I'm the president, I'm the emperor, I'm the king, I'm Michael Jackson, you Tito. <laughs> you can take being Tito. Oh. Honestly, I can. Yeah. Still means I get some of the spotlight. But then we get to, then we get to equipment, and this is one of those things where... I have I've tried to I've tried to avoid this for the longest time, but I really do not like how equipment is designed here. It is completely in the wrong game. Oh, I haven't looked at the equipment such and left yet. Do I get to cry some more? Um, you do because it's set because it's set up like like you would see like you would see equipment in a standard game, including including having um av having availability rules. As well as well as as well as the fact that once that once again the wep the weapon list is 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 established stuff. <sighs> I'm why? <sighs> All right, breathe, breathe, Zan. Fine. I'm fine. Why not just build your own? Why not just make this customizable? You know, I'm re I'm reminded of I'm reminded of a certain scene from DBZ Abridged. Oh no, it's fine. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. It bothers me. It bothers me a lot. And that one's still green. Ex <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all these squares make a circle. All these squares, all these squares make, a, make circle. a circle. Exactly. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Something I'd don't like to make... point out. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say something I'd like to point out is this availability, a obtaining equipment. The Morphin Grid just. Gives you the equipment. Sure, there should be a cost to making something really cool. Although, but this isn't. But this isn't. You're not. You're not acquiring equipment the way you would in a in a fantasy or even a contemporary RPG in in the setting. And yet, 
the way the way this equipment chapter is written, they seem to assume that. And truth truth be told, I think I think this is I think this is a system where or this is a this is a source material where equipment needs to be um needs to be far more narrativist. Yeah. Uh, tied to your advancement. The the if I'm be if I'm being honest, as much as as much as 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 obvious as this may be, I honestly think equipment design should be taking a page from our book. <laughs> yes, I love it. It's fantastic. A um, tag based design because um, now the the weapon the wep first off I don't I'm not fan I'm not a fan of how they designed the um the we the weapon chart it starts on page uh-huh i i see it and it yeah, on page and 108 it's it's gross i don't like it it's very it gross. looks like it was designed it was meant to be like a two-page spread for each part like it was all, it's meant to be side by side space. yeah if, if we change the page the page view to two page yes um the the side to side does show that there's requirements and other things like range and effects. Though this is one page than the other page, but it's all one table, and that's fucking gross. Yeah. Oh my god, that's gross. Honestly, what tr honestly what triggers me is the f is the amount of wasted space. Oh yeah, yeah. They've got an entire margin that they waste. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um. Now, Fine. now. Also, uh, I just want to point this out because if I have to suffer, you all have to suffer with me. They mentioned metallic armor as a limited equipment. What? Limited, complex, or expensive items that require additional training or trust, like upgraded metallic armor or special or customized power weapons. Trent, Trent, Trent. If I have to suffer, so do you. Trent. <laughs> so, Trent. But this, this so. This entire chart, which are these just supposed to be examples, or are these supposed to be weapons you have to pick from? Unless you want to, unless you want a house rule shit, this is what you got to pick from. That is <sighs> fucking stupid. Like that is, that is fucking stupid. Like, don't even get me on on how fucking stupid that is. That is. Fucking stupid. And so yeah, um, just blow up these these six pages of, of tables. Yeah, those, those, those go away. The other problem that I have is that the we is that the weapon choices, um, are a, are a very are a very standard fare, and yet we have seen plenty of times weapons throughout the series that that don't fall into the the standard axe, sword, bow, um, lo um, reach weapon that kind of thing. Uh, if, you, if you want, if we want a ultimate example of this, let's look at Jungle Fury. Yeah. Eh. Nunchaku, Staff, and Tanfa. Later on, we have later on we have, um, Gi um hand <laughs> whatever that was with Geki Chopper. Um. It's the Geki Chopper. <laughs> It is. It is our technically sword gun. I mean, I, I, I have to say that hand thing is is genius because he practices. Yeah, he's What's... supposed. To, he's supposed. To, he has a whole lot of karate motifs. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> oh. and then and th and then of course we have. Um, Geki, Vi Geki Violet, or RJ, also known as Best Mentor, <laughs> whose weapon is, he don't need no stinking weapon. <laughs> I have fist! I cast fist! Well, that and, ca that and cast, he, it'd be more accurate to say, I cast Muay Thai, but point still stands. To the point and where of course you get auxiliary weapons like the Bladed Fan, or how about the Skip It as a weapon? Oh, skip it. It's oh yeah, my it's god! A, it's a meteor hammer, but yeah, that's an it's it's that's a meteor hammer. Bomb, but okay, it's, 
It's a meteor hammer on the leg, monk. <laughs> it's a fucking skip it. <laughs> it's a f- no. Even like Kara made that joke when he did that review. And it's. Uh... And let's let's also let's also consider that there is nothing in here regarding transforming weapons. Wait, what? <laughs> Or if it Hold is, on. It's, it's, if it, you do that? If it is, it's hidden in some sort of um. Let's see. They have the whole thing about weapon upgrades, um, com- combined weapons. Okay, l- let me see. Is there an is there anything regarding weapon upgrades that hints at a a set that set that um setup? And it, <laughs> I'm not seeing it i'm looking yeah, they have weapons that can transform because they have the blade blaster and the power axe obviously but the, the blade the blade blaster is the only one that and the power axe are the only ones that actually indicate that they transform because they have two classifications of might sidearm melee and targeting sidearm energy yeah everything else nope it is single purpose and then they have other weapons Grenade, concussion grenade, close combat heavy blade, grappler, martial arts long bludgeon, martial arts short projectile, ranged short projectile, small thrown weapon, large thrown weapon, martial arts long blade, martial arts medium blade, close combat bludgeon. That must be what they want you to use if you're going to custom create your own custom weapons. That's stupid because they actually give you non-power examples. And who the f- fuck is using grenades in power rangers i don't know (laughs) i do not recall ever having a power ranger tossing a fucking grenade the closest i can think of is shooty kenger when he does his baseballs (laughs) yeah that still doesn't fucking count (laughs) oh i know i said the closest Mm -hmm. at the at the same in the same vein the the tiers of armor don't make any sense to me Oh God! I don't want to look anymore. Like instead of instead of having in, instead of having um like you have you have you have you have Mighty Morphins, Zeo, Turbo, and In Space. Mighty Morphins are referred to as light armor. Zeo and the others are referred to as medium armor. All that this really changes is if you have light armor, toughness plus one. Medium arm, medium armor plus two. Heavy armor plus three. I honest, I honestly think of, I'm honestly thinking of just, dro- of just dropping that particular pretense. Especially since, when I think of, um, when I think of medium, ar- the only thing that would count as medium armor are those rangers that have some, um, extra armoring, on their suit. like the, like the green rangers chest armor. Yeah. The, look I'm, what they have listed as the heavy armor here on that list. Yeah, the metallic armor. <laughs> so, so I, I also don't get why they classify Mighty Morphin armor as light when the when the Zeo armor looks basically the fucking same, except for different, you know, except for different detailing. Mm-hmm. It's sti- I'm I want. I want it to stop. I want it to stop. It needs to just stop. <laughs> <sighs> um, this is why we're doing this episode, Zan, because, yes, this is painful and it needs to be corrected. I'm exhausted by this bullshit. How do you think Monk felt? <laughs> oh, no, I know how Monk felt. Now, when it... When it comes to the other th- the other thing I'm making clear with equipment is instead of having these different damage types, um, we are go- we are simplifying it instead in instead of el- instead of elemental or energy or physical or whatnot, it's all damage, which is perfectly fine because unless a, a an ability does something specific to an enemy, like when they get frozen or whatever, um. It is all just damage. And frozen is just, frozen. You can just do as a debuff. Exactly. Um. That is. I have never wanted to punch Alpha Five more than I do now. 
<laughs> I accidentally scrolled down to the vehicles area. Vehicles take up a lot of space. No shit, Sherlock! Wow, I... no shit. Look at what we've got here, a fucking comedian. Uh... <sighs> I just think of all the times that Common Rider has it been able to collapse down their vehicles to trinkets! Mm -hmm. or, or hide them in space. Hi, Zero One. <laughs> no, they're 3D printed in real time, Monk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, re but remember, remember the bike and the whole, please watch your head. Yes, it was the greatest. I know. Oh, no, it gets uh, and when we get to the vehicles, it gets better. Mm. You know, you start off with the good ones. You got the you got the battle bike, the galaxy uh, glider, lightning cruiser, storm blaster, mega tank, and then in, right in the middle of it, we got the fucking rad bug. Yeah, inst I on I honestly think that a vehicle a vehicle template customization thing is applicable. I I'd, I'd like to point out that that I think I think Alpha's exclamation on the Radbug page is giving me a brain hemorrhage. Ah, oh, I see it. Oh fuck. I have to stop looking. I have to take off my glasses. I have to stop looking or I'm going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Monk, he says that the Radbug is one of Billy's finest creations. Let me it hurts. It Let hurts. Me... Yeah, I had to. Rem I had to remind myself what the rad bug looked like, and yeah, because I I honestly forgot that the rad bug existed. It hurts. And um, what's even worse is that it's actually a Sentai thing. The rad bug was from the Sentai. Although, I know. um. If I'm be if I'm being honest, Zero I have many problems with Zero Ranger, so not exactly an endorsement. I know. I'm just putting that aside, hurts. putting aside the presence of um Toei's Jekyll and Hyde. But also also the fact that way too much focus on annoying kids. Yeah, oh. that's more of his signature. And you know the template customization thing I mentioned for vehicles? Same thing applies with Zords. Zords should be either should be a completely separate character sheet, which they already kind of are, but we're go but we're going one step forward in the fact that um Zo in the fact of having Zo having Zords have their own archetype class. Because the way the way that the the way that the power spectrum classes are written in the book, especially since you get it at third level for some reason, which is weird because you look at a lot of seasons and they have access to Zords pretty damn quick, if not the first ep if not the first couple episodes. the uh, the approach to the, the approach that I'm that I'm considering with this is that is that when upon character creation. If if G un unless the GM says otherwise, you're creating your you're creating a ranger and you're creating a Zord. Much in say, Giant Guardian Generation or Mechton, you're creating your pilot and your mech separately. Mm hmm. Yeah, because it's got they're, they're, because the whole point of the Zords is they are basically connected to you through the morphing grid. Mm -hmm. So of course they're going to be this in a similar vein. Now this is the one time. It, 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 this is the this is a fifty fifty thing. On the one hand, they did the one smart thing and said the Zords that they list at the bottom are examples. They are not. You don't have to pick from those. You can customize your own. At least that would be the thing if it wasn't for the Zord features and the Spectrum Zord the, the Zord features, both Spectrum and automatic, which very heavily limit you. Yeah. Once again, the whole color thing. Black, hardened chassis. Blue, enhanced attack. Green, additional power type. Like, oh, 
Again, there's that MMPR bias showing up again, and yet they somehow want us to use stuff like the Battle Borgs or the Mega Vehicles, which, yeah, um, you know, especially. <laughs> Yeah. Now, as far as far as what those as far as what those archetypes would be, that's something I'd have to consider for um, later. Um, I'd prob I probably just have it as um, gr of of um all of of ver of um variable. Actually, no. You can pro we can probably just do it on transportation methods. Um, ground um ground based a um speed. A power, a power ground, a power and spe a speed and a and a in betweener. You could also have stuff like air and sea as well. Yeah, I'm th I'm thinking I'm thinking that it'd be it'd be an A and B combination. Um, first one is whether it's is whether it's a a power or speed type. The second one is whether it's a ground a ground or air one, and sp and um. Space ty space types automatically count as air ones. Um, but uh, and as far as the whole thing of growing it, growing every fifth level the way they have the way they have it set up. Um, as far as choosing one, as far as choosing one of one of those, I'd probably end up reworking it because we'd have these archetypes as full on classes. Okay. Um. As far as far as the as far as the features, if I'm being if I'm being honest, the only the only one that that I am, that I would be hesitant about putting in the feature list is combiner. I'd rather ha I'd rather have it that combiner that combiner is something that en that any Zord has can have access to, with one exception. And that is our specialist, because they don't tend to do a lot of combining. Yeah, I mean, they there are are there are specialists that did do combining. After all, you know, you have the the Mega Tiger Zord and yeah, such. Yeah, even the Dragon Zord was technically able to combine. It just was, you know. So I hate to say it, no. Even the specialist gets combiner. All right, fair fair enough. Um, but yeah, I do, I do think combiner is something that it, that shouldn't be a feature you pick. That's something you get right out of the gate. Yeah. Yeah, because what Zord Com wouldn't... Like, name me a Zord that can't combine with the others. Mm -hmm. Or at least can't combine with other Zords of its time. Like, there's the, the list is super fucking short. I think yeah. the list is zero. No. I'm thinking I can't, I can't think of a single set of Zords that doesn't have some combination capability. Now, now, when it comes to oh, some sorry. of the when it comes to some of the prerequisites, those are those are things that I'd have to, I'd I'd I just want to I'd want to retitle them simply to avoid the three E feet problem. You know where you know where the where the prerequis where the prerequisites weren't arranged in a way that in a way that you could find them just naturally reading through. Mm hmm. Oh. Um, and as far as, as far as zero G being an being an upgrade, I'm perfectly fine with that. Oh, Zords that can go into space. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um. So. Another one that I think is stupid, um, Zord Mega Weapon System. Every combined version of Zords have some sort of Mega Weapon. Without exception. Yeah, no. Yeah, if we but, if we if we were to go if we were to go all in on this, that's we'd probably end up going through these and seeing which ones we'd keep, which ones we'd toss, and which ones we'd reflavor. Um Yeah. Like legitimate legitimately, um, Combiner and Zord Mega Weapon System are kind of par for the course. Mm -hmm. You you get those because of the combining aspect and the Mega Zord um, aspect of whatever series you're going to or whatever you're designing outside of series. Yeah. 
even if it's not a, literally another weapon, like um, if we go to SPD and you use the 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 rather than the Deca Megazord, you have you know the 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 SWAT Zord, the one that was all flying and could shoot a giant laser out of itself like it was a giant gun. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember its name in SPD, yeah. but that 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 is still a mega weapon system. You can't not call turning your giant combined mech into an even bigger fucking gun uh, anything other than a mega weapon system. Yeah. Now, I do think I I do think that one one particular thing I would consider is th- is things like um is things like is things like mode changing. You mean like when, like when uh, the um, the uh, dragon zord could turn into the warrior mode and stuff? That's that's one option, and they do have a they do have a mode change. But one of the bi- one of the bigger ones I was think I was thinking was Gokai Silver's um, particular particular mech. Ah, yeah. Okay. Well, and then uh, let me. Let me take a quick look at that. I'm gonna pull a a quick um, goes, flutter here. Goes Eugen. Yeah, which was uh let's see. Um Yeah, it started as a ship and turned into a a, a Rex and then And then it hit the warrior mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which was Go Jujin. Yeah. There's um and that was all just one mech. That wasn't combining with anything at that no, time. No, but that's there is a warrior mode feat in here, but there, there's nothing specifically for multiple war. Then again, not aside from that, I don't. Most swords only ever had one, like two forms tops. Yeah. Good. So it, it is it is something to consider because I I do think I. I do think that the way a game like this needs to be designed is to accommodate for people getting creative within it. In fact, I, in fact, I'd argue that it needs to. We're, otherwise, you end up with that same, with that same problem. Um, and I, I argue that you could probably use warrior mode and just uh, attribute it twice, and then flavor it as one ship form, one's. Rex form, and then one is uh, Kotyuchin. Yeah, I um, but when we get into when we get into um, com- when we get into combat, um, what I f- what I find it what I find interesting if a if a bit uh, if a bit odd is. This speed is this speed system that they have. Yeah, it's it's. It looks like based on like a certain speed level, you can have just a, a move, a move in a standard, and then the typical move standard free. But if I'm be if I'm being if I'm being honest, it feels like. Reinventing, reinventing the wheel with that when it didn't need to be reinvented. Like it's you, you're bi- it's basically treating your speed score as action points. Is what is what it seems to be is what it seems to be going for. But if I'm be if I'm being honest, I don't see I don't see a re- I don't see a reason for that because this is something that would only really work if you're doing grid combat and I am fervently against grid combat in a Tokusatsu RPG. Mm-hmm. Some t- I can usually go either way regarding grid combat or theater of the mind. This one I got to put my foot down. Theater of the mind is the only way you can make something like this work. Yeah, it's, though especially with the stunt system. Though, Zan, remember how you were bitching earlier about the ninja power thing and how free actions would allow you to jump? Uh, this kind of actually explains why they set that up that way. Well, that's only well, if you're doing theater of the mind, because then you don't you don't signify feet, you just signify you jumped towards the enemy. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, you know, it says here, the character takes one move action, one standard, and a number of free actions equal to their speed minus two. 
So there would be a limit to how often, how many times you could use that free action. Even if the even if there is that limit, that's a cold comfort at best. Yeah, because you could dumped, somebody who's dumped a good amount of points into speed means that they're going to be able to abuse that movement a lot. Well, and put it this way: they take a number of free actions equal to speed minus two. If they do that before they start their movement stage. They can take all of those free actions, jumping as they want, as close to whomever they want, then actually move, and then attack. Mm -hmm. It's it's abusive as fuck. Yes. I, but yes, with, with, with the way Power Rangers works, and how they can either jump 10 feet straight in the air and still end up 200 feet across the, the quarry they're fighting in, and whatnot... Um, theater of the mind, it really is the only way to do this. Like, there's been there's been plenty of times where somebody has asked me how how to do a how to how to do a Power Rangers themed RPG, and I'm like, first thing you need to do is find all of Robin D. Laws's books and start taking fucking notes. <laughs> Especially everything that he did with Feng Shui, both first and second edition, as well as a non RPG book that he did that I highly recommend called blowing up the movies because you're dealing with you're dealing with a game that is used that is using a lot of um martial arts theater kind of te kind of techniques mm. so it's important to it's important to learn f to learn from the master about about these kind of things and i will freely admit that when i when i had whenever I, when the first i remember the first time that i had con that i considered running a Exalted campaign. I ended up binging on as many martial arts films and wuxia films as I, as well as some um, Tiancha adjacent stuff that I could get my hands on. I remember this. I remember you would not stop. Sh you would not shut up about that. Mm -hmm. Because, and this this is not the reason. The part of the reason why is I have a healthy amount of respect for what Harv Bennett did in. In preparation for Star Trek Two, because keep in mind when he was when he was, and as you already know, when he was producer, he hadn't seen he hadn't seen a single episode of Star Trek. So he binged the whole fucking series. Oh, I think I, when we when I did when you had and um, to to um bring things even further to our turf, um. Let's not forget that when you suggested ing ingress for a reconstruction shades, I binged that whole thing over over a weekend. <laughs> it took me I could have done it in a day, but I had I had to take breaks. Yeah, it was I couldn't finish it. It was slow. I I had to I had to take I had to take breaks to, so that so that I didn't wear myself out. Um but in t but in terms of in, ter in terms of in, in terms of actions I'm really I honestly think it should be every every character get, every character gets one gets one action um range range on ranged weapons shouldn't shouldn't really matter all that it should matter is what is what defense you're targeting and the putting it putting in putting in um mo putting in move actions is some actually I, actually I've got a I've got a bit of an idea um what about ha what about having it where the more st the more steps to your given action the uh, you have you have to take a one die penalty hmm so if I.e., if if somebody wanted to attack multiple enemies in their in one action, um, they'd if they'd end up taking a multi die penalty. Of course, you can have this offset by having it be a team attack. Where yeah, both sides are going to be taking penalties, but but the result is going to be shared. Yeah. You know, trying to tr again trying to encourage more actual teamwork. Because after all, you are a Sentai. Yeah. Make no mistake. We. Oh, 
Go ahead. No, I think we're on the same page here. But but yeah, basically, again, we I think something that you have to remember when this the, with this game is that yeah, the team aspect needs to be emphasized. Yeah, you know this this setup here that they have given us, while it tries to give a team thing going, a lot of the set a lot of the character creation, a lot of the actions seem to be more individually focused, and that's not going to work here. Um, you need to encourage the team play. I just had a light bulb moment. <laughs> Zan, oh God, Zan, you're Zan, you're gonna, you're either gonna groan or you're gonna laugh at this. Um, okay. You know the, you know the way that Heavens and Heresies handles initiative. I like where you're going. Go, 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 go. I am think, I am thinking that, I am thinking that needs to be taken here. Holy shit. Okay, yes. Okay, combined initiative between the entire team. You choose a team leader and or the captain takes team leader. And they choose who goes in what order and it's alternating between everybody. Holy fuck, yes. Holy holy fuck, yes. No, Tanner would be proud to have that initiative system taken into something with Power Rangers. Come on now. And you know what? It actually makes sense here because more often than not, while, yeah, there's probably going to be a lot of mooks involved... Mm -hmm. More often than not, it's going to be just f uh, the the five or six rangers versus a single monster. That kind of alternative back and forth would actually make more sense. Especially, especially since it means that you don't have um, a whole... When you have five-on-one in a traditional initiative-based setting, you have you have a case where, where people are getting multiple, uh, multiple opportunity that's... In that kind of situation, it's five opportunities to dish out damage versus just one. And the only way you can have this work is if the one is absurdly powerful. Not Monster of the Week level powerful, but general level powerful. You know, B-Bags, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, uh, so, Monk, but you know what this means, right? What? That in return for taking that type of initiative system, we also kind of have to take his enemy building system mooks are just minions that have like a few stre their packs or something that only take like they you auto hit when you choose to attack them and that takes one strike off of them and after a few strikes they're just gone then you have your general enemies your elite enemies your multi-part enemies etc honestly yes you have to take both because the initiative system was made for those types of things in mind and it fits Power Rangers again. It fits Power Rangers, so it works. <laughs> it fucking works, and I love it. And uh, yes, we 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 will do that. That is the thing we will do. Um, Danner, if, if you ever watch this episode, um, thank you, and also you're welcome. Yeah. Now, I think we need to. Ex I think since. There may be some watching this who are not as familiar with Heavens and Heresy's method of initiative. I think that's something we need to explain. Okay. The way, the way, so I'll let you I'll let you take this. Yeah. So initiative is a is a role amongst all members of the team and all of the encounter um, opponents, whatever they might be. And the highest role amongst the team is, uh, amongst the team in the encounters, d decides which team goes first. If so, whoever's got the highest role on the good guy side, if it's higher than whoever's got the highest role on the bad guy side, the good guys go first in, in the order. From there, you then, all of the team in Heavens and Heresy at least, chooses an initiative leader, and that initiative leader decides which members act in which order, and they decide it on the fly. So, for example, let's say uh, we all roll the dice, Monk gets the highest roll, Monk's in the leader position, uh, Monk gets to choose who goes first in the first slot of the initiative order, and chooses uh, Shades to go. After Shades goes, one of the monsters acts. Then it comes back to our time. Monk then chooses the next person to go. And that way, you also have a changing tactical battlefield. Uh, that way, 
all of a sudden you know, huh, somebody's closer to this person. Maybe I should make them act first so that they can take advantage of that. Um, it's a, it's a really big uh, tactical advantage, and even if you go second, which never happened to us, but it really possibly could have with all the other bad rolls we were having that day. Um, <laughs> but it, even if you go second, still choosing having the party leader choose who goes next in the order is useful because that way they can you know take the oversight of the tactical battle and say oh yeah this person needs to act since they since they haven't acted yet so that they can take advantage of whatever opportunity is coming mm -hmm. and it just goes back and forth between uh between players and between the enemies yes and by ha by having it that the team leader has to defer who has to defer who gets who gets um actions once again, we're reinforcing that teamwork thing. Yep. Um, now, one of the one of the things that I wrote in is that m instead of instead of having hit points, mooks have cohesion. What this basically determines is the overall strength of of that group of that group of mooks. And I'd say I'd say also I'd say also also applies as a bit of a morale check that they can take. Which yeah. as as cohesion get, as cohesion gets lo gets lower um between between round but when when the round order resets you can ha you can have it where the where um where the part where the where the rangers can can um can set can can make the GM make a cohesion check. Mm -hmm. If the if the checks if the check succeeds, then it can then the then you can, then the mooks keep fighting. If it fails, they're routed, and they and they got to get the hell out of there. Or the or the or their or the monster of the week blows them up, whichever you prefer. Because this also this also means that. But I really think that Mooks should also just be that that auto hit that even uh, Tanner has in his system because they're Mooks. They're meant to act as stumbling blocks in your main endeavor, and, and so you you have a few auto hits before they just automatically fall apart or whatever. Yeah, it it's automatically gonna hit, but you could damage cohesion through stunts. Yeah, and um, and the and the big thing there is that uh, by actively choosing to take action against a mook, you are sacrificing the chance to take action against the 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 mot w. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they do. They as far as the whole thing with size classes, that's not re that's only really a factor when things are when things are big. <laughs> Let my monster grow. What? Yeah. Um. When it comes to, when it comes to the, when it, when it comes to the attack, when it comes to the attack, when it comes to attacks, I don't think we'd have to change. We'd only have to make slight changes on that front. Um. Dual wi um dual wielding. I don't. Th I think would. I think would just be a flavor thing. If I'm being honest. Yeah, I don't think that that would necessarily be something that you could really have act as a perk. Um, I'm not sure how you could work it that way. Especially, especially since you have to ask, you have to answer the question. Okay, if we're gonna do that, how are you, how are you going to handle um, transforming weapons? Yeah, you also have to answer the question of how are you going to keep. Uh, single wielding um entertaining and interesting and not encourage min maxers to just all go dual wielding yeah but having having it that you have to that you have to that you have to pick a defense i'm perfectly i'm perfectly fine with that it also gives the it also gives the ridi the ridiculous possibility of of um psychic weapons let's say mm. let's say you have a weapon that targets social defense 
Because we have had psychics in the series, but it's mostly just been telekinesis, and that's it. That's telekinesis, Kyle. <laughs> oh. And... As far as far as as far as the the way the way health and the way health and da and damage works, um, I'm honest. I'm honestly th I'm honestly thinking of ha given going back to that whole um, tag based weapon design. I think we'd I think we'd pro we'd probably in we'd probably could take ho take wholesale the um, the temp the template system that we have. You know the light, yeah. medium, and heavy heavy approach to melee and ranged weapons. Yeah, it's just that instead, if you hit, you do one damage. If you stunt, you can do you can do an additional damage for each set. Mm hmm. Um, and that's all. That's all the. Com I'd say that's all. I'd say we'd have it that that's all the combined sets. But in t but. This do this does mean that it w that it that all that would matter is that you hit is that you hit over. But I don't want to I don't want to. But the the um extra die that we generate through our system doesn't isn't going to really fit this. Yeah, we don't we don't really need to put it in here. So just that just having it that you either hit or you don't um keeps things keeps things simple and keeps things flowing. Yep. Um, and uh. As we all know, Power Rangers are best when every when the action's flowing and moving. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, and when when it comes to when it comes to the non-standard forms of combat, there's not a whole lot I'd need to change with that since it's just, since all that would happen is just using different skills for attacking. Different skills and different essences. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. The terrain thing, no need. To, the terrain, the terrain and stuff, no need to change. No need to change that. Um, it is a bit amusing that the sample disease they put in the disease section is tetanus of all things. Um, that's that's um, kind of dark. Hmm. Interesting like what, choice. Why would they use tetanus? I have no idea. There's plenty of fantastical diseases you could invent. Yeah. And when it comes to when it comes to the conditions, I think all that we'd all that we'd really change with that is putting in is putting in some sort of duration rules. Which again we can tie into stunts. Yeah. Um, the location, the location thing, not a whole lot we need to change about that. It's just a, it's just a deeper look at Angel Grove. I think, if, I think if I, to be fair, if I, to be fair, if I was writing a location chapter in my own take, um, an approach that, I, an approach that I'd rather do instead of just, instead of just using Angel Grove as an example, is put in, is put in some advice to, a lot to allow people to build their, to build their own hub city. Or hub space station, or etc. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, because you know you have to account for things like uh in space and such. Yeah, and truth truth be told, if you and this is good, this is going to be a bit predictable, but you want to know you want to know what the uh, what my patient zero example is for a for an example hub space. Uh. It's not Angel Grove. It's actually so, It's actually something that's going to be pandering to you, Shades. Mm -hmm. Because an ill wind is blowing. <laughs> oh, you're just a half-boiled detective, monk. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I was no, I was cosplay. I was cosplaying as the boss. Remember, I am. A I am not half boiled. I'm sorry, but with that reference, y yeah, kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, Futo, um, is a is a character in Double, and I am fully of the belief that if you're gonna if you're gonna have a bunch of stuff happen in this one city, you need to have that city be a character. Zoame City. 
Zoam. Monk? Yes? Why did nobody tell Zoame City it's just Japanese Angel Grove? <laughs> they even have a fruit bar that they go to for most of the early episodes. He's not wrong! I can't fault them that! Gaim, I love you to pieces. I really do. And that reference is genius. I mean, it's even they, they, they even have color coded warriors, very much more color coded than most common writers. Yeah, no, there's no getting around it. It's fucking Angel Grove. Fuck. <laughs> um, when it comes to the threats, this was another place where there was a bit of um bullshit. Oh no, <laughs> aka heavy MMPR bias. Because uh, if all they do, they don't even give you a, a wings to create your monster. They just list a whole bunch of MMPR monsters and have you go at it. Um, if that w if that, it would be bad enough if that was the primary problem that I had. But there's one other. Tell me where it explains what the hell a threat level is. Wait, what? Wait, what? Monk? No. The chapter goes into the threats, t the threats, um, splash image. Then the fr then run page after is the stat for Chunky Chicken, in his in his normal size. I see, I see threat level five. Yeah, but it doesn't tell me at all what the fuck a threat level is. How is Finster a threat level nine? Why are Putties a threat level zero? But then why are put putties a threat level 2 and Z putties a threat level 3? It looks to me like it depends on the type like what lo like how big of a mo like not, not so much size wise but how important of a monster they are. Finster being the one that creates monsters is a threat level 9 which I can see. Putties being common mooks they're pretty much nothing. And you've got you scroll down further. You got Rita Revolta, who's a threat level twelve, because he's a freaking general who can actually put up a fight. Hold on. What? What? Uh -oh. What? Uh -oh. oh dear. What? The first place threat level is actually mentioned in the book is inside one of the influences. There is no definition. The only way I found out the only way I found out about it. And this is a prime slash of bull this is a prime slash of bullshit. is is the is the fact that they uh, on is um as a as a fo as a follow up pdf they put in they put in a thing of how to read a essence 20 stat block and i only found out i only found out about this through when um, Z when zell shared this hold hold on Hold on, wait a minute. There's a section in the GM area right after threats uh, I, that I saw a brief mention of something. I'm like, but aren't you already doing that? Um, I just under uh, I under running an under running an adventure. One, read the core rule book. Like, this is the core rule book. So you're already reading this. If you've reached this chapter and you've just been reading in in order, you're already number one's already done. So why would it tell you to do that again? I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, there, maybe there, a, maybe there a certain person in that other in that other server. You know, the one that you told the one who who ended up pissing you off earlier today. Uh... Or there, um. 
or they're the guy in, or the one guy in, Acro in the across server who we've who's become our lol cow. Mhm. Mm um. But I'm I did I did a hard search for threat level and there's and even though it's mentioned in a few places, was there's not forty much... mentions total. Yeah. Yeah. And if you'll check in Disputation of Geek Watch, I on the ser on the server guys, this is the this is the image that was shared with me, of how of how to read a basic Essence twenty stat block. This was the first time that it actually said what a threat level is. Level of a threat indicates the average level of a party. It's fucking CR. Yes. That's dumb. That's fucking stupid! It, as stupid as it is, I had assumed that's what it was. I seem to have assumed correctly. However, I don't care. <laughs> however, the the problem the problem that I the problem that I have is that this wasn't in the book. How hard oh, could course. it have been to just put this as one page just after the opening page for threats? Or, you know, one page because that, that's a stat block for threats specifically but i mean isn't that threat that how to read that's it says how to read a basic essence 20 stat block and this shows a threat specifically but there have been plenty of stat blocks prior to this but also have threat levels if you look at things like vehicles mm -hmm. couldn't have been put up there couldn't have been put put up at where stat blocks first start appearing I'm suddenly I sud I have a better understanding in recent years why a lot of the white a lot of the good white wolf books fuck Onyx Path um had a lexicon in the first few dozen pages Usually yeah. before you got out of the first chapter you had a lexicon of important terms important terms and you understood many different things about about the basics of what you're going to be reading in the book Also if you want to know why I keep why I keep bitching about games that don't have an index or don't have a glossary, this is why. This one has a, an index but no glossary. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, when it comes to the running and adventure part, the stuff, the advice that they give doesn't doesn't really do a whole. Is very generic, like the kind of the kind of advice I would see in any book. But there isn't anything about about making it feel like a Power Rangers campaign. The reason why I'm harping on this, the fucking Sailor Moon RPG was, knew how to do that. Oof. Sailor Moon RPG was pretty decent too. Oh, it was. It's pro it's pro it was probably one of the it was probably one of the best ones that came out of that early um that that early Guardians of Order run, and it certainly makes a lot more sense than a Ghost Dog RPG that they did. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love that movie, but yeah, I got a ghost dog. <laughs> but a ghost dog RPG. Uh... <laughs> but um I'm looking in the index now, Monk. It also doesn't me mention threat level anywhere in there either. Mm -hmm. There was never going to be a definition of threat level in this book. Yeah. And while there while there's the while there is the um Example adventure of Fool's Errand. If I'm being mm -hmm. honest, that that kind of example adventure, or instead of doing example adventures, what they should have done is a series of story hooks or story seeds. Yeah, not a mini module or one shot. Because mm -hmm. honest, honestly, unless you're breaking into the arc story of Power Rangers, um. What is Power Rangers mostly known for? Monster of the Week. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do a quick, some sort of quick run, some sort of, some sort of quick start or a one shot, Monster of the Week is going to serve you the best. So having a small, tiny hook for that day's episode, because I'm sure that's what you would call it. Um, you you could just have those little tiny story hooks to help with one shots and quick starts. And then, of course, you could have how to make this feel more like the the larger arc stories of Power Rangers or whatever. Yeah. Also, also, if I also if I hadn't if I hadn't made it clear in the past, um, if you look if you look at the back end, you'll see the you'll see the character sheet. 
That's an it's ugly ass character. That's an it's ugly ass character sheet. It's gigantic and gross. I don't like it. Oh Jesus Christ! Is it is it the wor- is it the ugliest character sheet that I've seen? No. That honor still goes to Pathfinder Second Edition. We don't, we don't we don't talk about that in this household. Also, um, all of the all of the default character sheets for any for every White Wolf game I've ever played in my life. Yeah, the twentieth anniversary character sheets are way better. And you, you know who you know who did those character sheets, Mister mm. Gone. Mm-hmm. You know the guy the guy who's basically been a godsend to World of Darkness for about for over ten years. Yep. I am. Um, I I. Like, I understand why they did some of the design elements here, because it's Mighty Morphin with all the jagged edges. Um, but it, you, the ew. layout's just kind of oof, look all at, over the place. No, look at look at how Speed's skills are are just a little bit longer than everybody else's because they have the initiative as a skill bullshit. Yeah, you you literally you take that out. It's the same length as smarts or social. Yep. Oh my god, that's gross. I don't. Mm, 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 mm. I really hope. I really hope they. I really hope they weren't paying their graphic design. Whatever they were paying their graphic designer, it was clearly not enough. Oh, damages, damages, damages tracked as bubbles. Yeah. And then health <sighs> is of course a number. What? What? Oh, I, Lord. I skipped over that. I'm not... I want... I want... I want to... It, uh. he's, he's gonna pop! <laughs> <laughs> Matrix. Yep, that's what I was going for. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, 158. Wait, what? 16? It's on 170. So... What's zero and... What's health and what's damage? Why is there damage bubbles but you only mention health? Also, um, let me see if let me see if I can f- let me see if I can find the thing because there was one little uh, there was one little typo that really makes me th- really makes me think that th- that this game or- this game or- at one point was supposed to be a five E hack of uh, for um, Power Rangers. Let me see if I can. F- because I know I saw it in here when I was when I was covering this for the review. I just need to fi- I just need to find the damn thing. And and this means I have to try and look for it the hard way. Cuz I know I'm not, I know I'm not hallucinating. I'm not that crazy yet. I'm still trying to I'm still trying to determine why there are damage dots and then a health box. There's no explanation. Especially since you could ju- the smart thing to do for that is just um max health, current health. And it's not like it's not like this is a dot ba- it's not like this is a checkbox based health system like say World of Dar- World of Darkness. Yeah, it's not like you have um, stacking uh, negative modifiers from taking damage. Mm-hmm. Also, call me um, call me petty, but you know that I'm as I'm as petty as you are, monk. Oh, <laughs> I f- I found it. I oh, found the, I found the I found the typo. Look on page. 139 if you're looking at the P- at the page number at the PDF page numbers. 
under nin under um is as the ninja powered zord fe zord um feature grants edge edge increase strength score by two no, increase no, no no not that look at the prerequisite ha! not the ninja power grid power and or perk but feet yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Either that, that or it's just a 5e writer who's very, very habitual. But I'm I'm guessing it's probably a five it was gonna be a five E hack at first. Yeah, and um now gr now granted, there were some weird there were some weird artifacts when we covered H and H and there was and um we, Yeah, but H and H was a direct hack of five E. One, it was a direct hack, two, it's still in early access, and th and three it's co it was co it was constantly changing and up and updating itself, and it still is. And four, it's a one man operation, whereas this one had a whole team working on it. Yup. Like, you have three uh, you have three authors, and one and one of th and um one of them, I'd say Brian um Brian C P Steel has Brian C P Steel and a has some experience in tabletop, but it's mostly board and card games from what I could find. TJ Storm is an actor who has whose closest closest ties to tabletop is is um ha is having a cup of coffee in critical role. No, 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 Monk, do you do you want my moment of pettiness? Cause what? On the very first page of the of the character sheet, next to name. Oh, why does that? Oh God damn it! I see it. Why does that need to be there when no one else will see your character sheet besides you? Yeah, but um, he, TJ St but TJ Storm's only only um tabletop only tabletop um background is being in one one shot on critical role that being song of the lorelei where he was lucius lorelei that's the that's it beyond that beyond that he beyond that he's an actor or a, and a he's he's done he's done some minor acting work he's done some voice acting work and and some mo and some mocap work, which you know, good f good for him. But what is he? But what the? And if and if I got the wrong TJ Storm, I apologize in advance. But if this is if I did get the right TJ Storm, um, what qualifications does he actually have? As as a principal author. And then I w then I went through the names on the for under Essence Twenty Design. Again, most of most of the most of their credits on on Geekdo, the table the RPG version of Board Game Geek, it's mo it's mostly 5e modules. And a lot of a lot of 5e modules I hadn't even heard of, which is saying good or ill. Which, which um, let which let me let me make, let me drive that point home. It's 5e modules that I hadn't heard of. Yes, this the man who has heard of some of the most underground hipster shit there is. <laughs> let's let's be let's call a spade a spade here, Monk. You are a you are a TTRPG hipster. I just I don't look good in glasses. Well, not not <laughs> um not those kind of glasses. I know. I'm just saying you 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 are one. Mm. It's okay. We understand. But Given given all of that, I think you I think you guys understand now why that why this thing made me rage so much. And Zan I think especially understands since there were multiple moments where it looked like he was gonna blow a gasket. Hell I, I'm not even that big of a I'm not the TRPG guy. I had I have very little experience and even I could find things about this that pissed me the fuck off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what does that tell you? And that I'm that tells us that we're finally turning you into one of us. One of us. I wouldn't hold your breath on that. It's just I know enough to know what the hell I'm looking at. Hell, I, I know enough to know bullshit when I see it. Mm -hmm. Can't bullshit a bullshitter. And because you can smell it from a mile away. The reason, the reason again, 
if this was if this was a fan made project, that probably wouldn't be all that harsh. I um I may have ripped Cogent a new one, but at the very least, I was I end I ended my take on that with a bit of optimism. Because yep. I generally want people to put to put out bet to put out better stuff with experience. Um, the Power Rangers RPG as it is should have just been a hack of Fifth Edition. Granted, an extensive hack like say in, at the level of say S Five E or Esper Genesis, but a ha but a hack nonetheless. And considering the monk's stance on Five E, that should tell you something. And and hell, I'm pretty hell. I'm pretty sure people would have expected that because ha because Hasbro. Yep. Now, when it comes to now as now as far as as far as whether whether or not that would have been be whether or not that it would have been better, well, it can't it can't be any fucking worse. All you'd all you'd really have to do is just is just have everybody be, have everybody be a monk and half the job's done for you. That's pretty much what they did, anyways, with how the grid powers work. <laughs> yep, um, they can't even do your shtick right. <laughs> they bring sh they bring dishonor to monks everywhere. Dishonor to your family. Dishonor to your cow. <laughs> 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 but I on but it I um I have to I have to question how. How um inundated with the franchise these these writers were. It really it really feels like they tried to hodgepodge things that don't fit within Power Rangers. So I have to question the amount of research that they even did. Um, I'm I'm thinking that we can answer that question, Monk. Just go look at what they suggest as examples, and that's the amount of research enough to give the the uh, illusion that they care. You know, at least the at least when at least the guy the guy behind RPM, he didn't look at every episode of of the franchise up until that point, but he at least looked at a handful from every season to get to get the gist of what of what he should and shouldn't be doing. And RPM, and that's why RPM good? is considered one of the one of the top five best seasons of the franchise, despite everything oh. working against it. Yeah, he was able to take Go Onger. And turn it into a post-apocalyptic series. Which um, is it wrong that I want that I would I would pay good money to have been a fly on the wall when he first looked at Go on your footage? <laughs> oh no, you don't have to be on a fly on the wall. There's already documents about it. I, and Carr even <laughs> brought it up in his review. I know, and he was like, he was like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I just said I could turn this into a serious front of series. What the fuck? Does this cars have eyes? <laughs> yep. <laughs> And unfortunately, he was too far in to just back out. Yeah, he, he bragged that he could pull off it. That he could take any footage and make it work. Well, time to put your money with your mouth, is there, buddy? Did and he, he did he deliver. Did. Well, he kind of delivered. Let's be fair. He kind of got booted off because he was taking too damn long. Mm -hmm. Well, even then, uh, what he did do, he delivered. So I agreed. I'll agree to that. Yeah. However, how uh, he cert he certainly did he certainly did better than um than the than the man who was wanted for crimes against Tokusats. <laughs> I I no 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 monk stop. <laughs> if you keep that if you go any further than that, both me and Sam will have your head. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> but I do want I do want to I do want to kind of um summarize what we came up with. So we dro we dropped individual level instead went with team level. Mm -hmm. We are do we are doing a sum based a sum based die system. Mm -hmm. With um raw with with three tiers of d8s, d10s or d12s you roll based on based on your essence. And um, and the the die face is decided by whether you're untrained trained or have um, expertise in mm -hmm. um, initiative is the no, higher between it. strength or speed. Conditioning is the higher between speed or smarts. Um, no, other way around. Conditioning is the highest between strength or speed. 
Okay. Okay. Let Be me switch that over. Because initiative is either your awareness, your is your awareness and your ability to react to to the threat. So speed for your physical reaction, uh, smarts for your mental. Yeah. But yeah, you roll you roll essence and die compared to eight compared to DC. We went with a stunt system that is total amount of match sets. I thought I thought about going with highest with highest set, but no, but no, going with going with total sets I think would be better off for us. Yeah. Um. The way stunt the way stunts would be would be utilized is not too far removed from the from the advantage dice in Genesis mm -hmm. and the advantage results that you can spend on extra effects. Um, any sort of situational modifiers or the up and down shifts those are just adding those are just adding or subtracting die. Um, yep. Orig the only thing with origins that we change is ju is just is just some of the, just some of the things that don't fit this new system. The roles are the roles are completely overhaul. We're going we would completely overhaul, not make giving the, giving them broader titles instead of using the colors. Yep. Um. Ro the role a bit the role a the role abilities we we have a free form feature list. Um. Pr um. If we were to do if we were to do this in more detail, all the um, prime features would be reworked. Yep. Um, Zord features get mo get moved into their own, into their own thing, and as as well as the as well as Zord creation, we have instead of a instead of a personal power thing, we have personal power and team power. Mm -hmm. Um. I think we we also did the whole thing of you're getting e you're getting either a perk or a f or a power every other level yep with power starting at one and perk starting at two mm -hmm. this does mean that f this does mean that sometimes you might get a perk a, a perk or power and a feature but i but i have no problem with that I you want you want a lack of empty levels we don't want to limit things just because we're trying to balance levels yeah and there, there were a few there were a few empty level culprits in in the um book Plus, um, the fact of the matter is, as I said earlier, you're the fucking Power Rangers. Being a little more powerful fits the theme. Mm -hmm. um, edges and snags are our are our um, exploding and imploding results. Yep. Um, if you have an edge, you add one die anytime a die anytime you have a max result. Um, this is not this is not cumulative. Yep. I.e., the maximum amount of the maximum amount of die that you can ha that you can have explode is equal to the die you already rolled, and that's it. and you're only going to get that if you get if it, for an essence roll you get all eights, which yeah, um, you might be you might be able to do at low at lower tiers, but the higher the higher tier you go, the harder it's going to be to do that, and that would all although it oh, go ahead and. If you did that with say with say um five in essence five roll, um you would need five d8s and that would also be a five die stunt. So that would be that would be a case of ridic of ridiculous amount of um that would be ridiculously rare but ridiculously powerful. It would be one of those moments where everybody at the table cheers. Mm -hmm. Um. Story points we we kept, but we ha but the story point pool is party or d or GM centric. Um, mm -hmm. Hang ups, we hang up. We had it that hang ups generate SP. Oh yeah, and I yep. forgot about in, I forgot about influences. Instead of instead of the haphazard way that they do influences, we have it that your perk grants an edge on certain skills. Your hang up um, generates an edge when that skill is used against you. And if an and if a hang up is used against you, whether you successfully navigate through it and are unaffected, or whether you fail and it affects you, uh, you still get that story point regardless, mm -hmm. just because the the hang up occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had that we also redid grid power bloom so that instead instead it grants a number of personal power points equal to the number of story points you did. And I think I think with how we've ha with how we've handled specialization, the whole thing of of bumping up a bumping up a um 
a, a essence die roll to a skill or specialization roll isn't going to be as bullshit. Mm -hmm. Um, for per for um perks and grid powers, we'd probably end up reformatting a lot of the per a lot of the perks and scrapping some of the setting specific ones like ninja power. Um, and of course the whole gain grid power at odd levels and a perk at even levels. Um, equipment, weapons, and armor would would weapons would be tag based. Armor would be a three tier approach. Cause there's not a whole lot of armor customizations we can really get away with. Yeah, that would start dipping into things like the personal upgrades that we see in some shows. And truth be and truth be told, I'm honestly considering having um, Battleizer be a grid power. Battleizer that way, anybody can those, take it, or those kind, or those kind of um, those kind of t those kind of upgrades. That way, anyone can take it, which is the way it should be. I can agree with that. Um, especially since the way we'd probably do it is that you is that you can access it, but you've got it. You've got to dump in. Um, you've got to dump in pow um, power in order to maintain it. So you're you're getting a lot. You're getting a lot of free shit, but you're get, but you're going to be draining. And if you use personal, you're going to be draining a whole lot quicker. Yeah. Um. And yeah, you you could drain it for um for team, but uh, but teammates have to obviously consent to that. Yep, actively contribute to it. Um, hey guys, I, I gotta go. It is uh, really late for me. All right, all right, man, stay frosty. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna sit on that myself. So have a good night, guys. Good night. Thank you very Stay much up. for coming, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Um, template cust the template system would also apply to vehicles. Um, Zords as archetype class as archetype classes, power and speed, and land and air um, combinations. Mm -hmm. um, co um, combat multiple actions accrue a minus one die penalty for each one. Mm -hmm. um, we're stealing the initiative the initiative and mo and monster systems from heavens and heresies. Especially yep. the whole thing with mooks, and that yep. that about covers everything. the The um, threat level thing, I don't think I don't think we would do. Which, Not necessary. It it very it very much isn't, especially especially when the way that the way that the um this th this setup this setup is written. Um, you can just you can just as easily you utilize some of the utilize some of the benchmarks that one that one might get from from you can they're essentially they're essentially simplified versions of characters so you can pretty much use that yeah for uh, for um monster stat blocks yeah um and mooks have cohesion instead of hp hitting mm -hmm. mooks automatically succeeds that reduces cohesion by 1 you can use stunts to reduce cohesion even further and cohesion can be used as a morale ch as a morale check. Mm -hmm. And I think that covers everything. And I'm not I'm not trying to say that our approach is perfect, but I do think that this approach would be significantly better than right. what, than what was given because of all the problems we had. Yeah, I think the only other thing that we didn't mention and can really only mention briefly is that with the Zord section, uh, all Zords automatically gain Combiner and Zord Mega Weapon systems. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, it's going to be just like we were mentioning earlier, like in Mechton, a build your own. Yeah. And that that is... That is something we... Now I know somebody might say, "What ab what about how what about um villain swords?" You'd probably write villain swords as just as just gi as just giant enemies. Yep. And if if somebody's asking, "How would you stat Serpentera?" Here's that's the fun part. You don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't because it's a big mother. It's a big motherfucker. And even in even in Dire Ranger, the idea of combating 
that dr- that dragon is seen as suicide. Mm-hmm. But with but with that but with all that said, I think that I think that's going to cover ev- going to cover everything that w- everything that we could throw at this. We will be no. go ahead. Everything that we can throw at it in a single geek watch, mm. unless we wanted to give this the FF Legend treatment. Um, I have I have no plans on doing that yet. When FF Legend is a, is a little bit further along to the point where to the point where it can actually go into play testing, I will consider it because once, I, I, once uh... it gets into that thing, that setup, I um I don't have to be as direct hands on with it. I can, yeah, I can just dip, I can just dip into and fix things here and there at my own leisure. Yeah, I am. Um, I don't know if I would want to to do this one to be honest, but uh, now, this I'm always would, willing this to give be, it the good. Worst case scenario, this would be one I'd do on my own. Okay. I mean, i i I'd, I'd certainly I'd certainly appreciate I certainly appreciate the um the sec the second opinion, but. But I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to overwork you. <laughs> yeah. But with but um, with all that said, I do want to give my thanks to everyone for taking the time out of their schedule to come onto the, to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. Um, I do have a. I do have a few interviews that I'm get that I'm going to be doing throughout this week, including one that I've got to do at eight in the morning because fucking time zones. Hmm. Always fun. Well, the combination of time zones and somebody who couldn't do weekends. Oof. That's a pain in the ass. Yes, it is. So, un- so until, so oh, so please look forward to that. Plus, I do. Plus, I do have some. I do have some reviews that are going to be coming, including including a mu- including one of the longer musings that I call the value of follow through. Comparing level up and um, heavens and heresies, and anyone who thinks that's an unfair comparison, well, it's my show. I do whatever the fuck I want. Anyone who thinks that's an unfair comparison doesn't know how comparisons work. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay. Fucking frosty and join the watch.